Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. Good morning. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. I do appreciate it. You can get involved by calling 888 7753 773 888 Jesse, J E S S E, Jesse, my brand new biblical question for this week. And it's a doozy. Brand new. Why do you call yourself a sinner? Why do you call yourself a sinner? You ever ask yourself that? Why? Why do you call yourself? a sinner. We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show, jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And if you're busy anywhere in the world and we are heard around the world, if you're flat earth up and down the world, but around the world, by everybody and their mama, everybody. So if you're busy working now, making breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or in some country you're about to go to bed, you can still be listening to the show on your iPhone or iPad. You can podcast all the shows, of course, but you can be listening on your iPhone or iPad by calling the listen line at 641 793 one five zero zero six four one seven nine three one five zero zero, and um, to donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com dot com slash JLP talk. Buy me a coffee. Buy me a coffee dot com slash JLP talk. Or bond JLP on Cash App. Bond JLP Cash App. I do appreciate it. I um so yesterday they had the uh eclipse thing. It happened. And it's not the first time it's happened it has happened in the world, not the second time, not the third time. And but it was interesting to to what on the on the media in the in the news, local news and some uh, national news, it was interesting to see the people get all wiring up about it. And it was so emotional and feeling so good. I heard one reporter say, Oh, it's nice that the people are uniting together for a call. You were not uniting together, but I heard that. And it was amazing to see how easily it is for human beings to get excited over nothing, to at least get, at least get a moment of thrill, of a, a so-called feel-good thrill, so that they can forget their problems for a minute. And as soon as the eclipse passed, they were back in their misery, reminded again of their hell that they were living in. It, they were, it was, it was amazing to see it. People getting that excited over a moon going between the sun and the earth. And it had nothing to do with them. It didn't change one of their problems. And then so I was, as I was watching some of the local news, I was looking up, paying attention to the skies to see who were going up 
because a lot of the Christians thought these were the end times. These were the days. This was yesterday was the day that the Lord was coming back. And that. What the? And that they're going to be taken up. But lo and behold, and I was watching the new, national news and local news in case I would not see the Christian going up nationally or locally. And not one went up. I was like, what the? Now, the Lord didn't come and take one of them up. I'm like, wow, that's pretty disappointing for the Christians because they thought that this was the end time. Everybody waiting for the end time, right? Um, and, and I saw a little history about the eclipse thing, right? And ever since mankind been on earth, one generation after another generation have always thought something weird about the eclipse. So one, one, at one point in history, they thought a dragon was uh, eating up the, the sun or something, the moon. And they, uh, another time in, in history, they would sacrifice human beings for the eclipse. So, and so the, it's, nothing has changed. Human nature is still the same. And nothing is new under the sun. And they are living in their imagination thinking that it has something to do with God as far as end time. It's amazing how deceptive the uh, imagination is. That's why God said, bring every thought into captivity. Your thoughts are not your own. Your thoughts are not mine. And, he, and yet, human beings, including the Christian, live by the imagination, it is their God, which is of the devil. Not one Christian went up. And I'm sure they were, a lot of them ran out of their homes and stood outside so that they wouldn't get hit in the head by the roof of the house. And nobody was taken up. Now they got to wait for another clip or something else so they can believe that the end time is still coming. May God have mercy upon human beings. Well, he already has, to be honest. And the eclipse was just for the thrill of it. It just felt good. And then once it was passed, they are back to their misery. All for the thrill of it. For the thrill of it. Uh, this is from Citizen Free Press. Reporter loses control on live TV as the clip passed over Texas. Watch this from the Weather Channel. That's evil. You hear the cries of evil. That's what that was. The cries of evil. Emotions are not good, folks. And, you got, and most human beings, not all, some are waking up to it now, male and female. Emotions are your enemy. They are not to be worshipped. And they are not to be looking for every opportunity to become emotional unless you're ready to go through it and overcome it. That is ridiculous what you just heard there. Ridiculous. What are you out there carrying on for about a moon going between the sun and the earth? Why not just watch it without being all emotional about it? It had nothing to do with you. You didn't make it happen. You can stop it from happening. And yet you get false glory. And there were people traveling from one state to another one to watch it. 
Do what you want. I suggest you overcome emotions. There's a better life without emotions, a better life. The worst life is an emotional life. The best life is an unemotional life. But you got to lose a life to get it. A CBS was reporting. Police says a woman claiming God told her to go on shooting spree because of solar eclipse. Isn't that amazing? I guarantee you, if that happened, if this story was true, the devil told her to do that. The end time is coming. You might well go shoot it. According to CBS, police says a woman claiming God told her to go on a shooter's spree because of solar eclipse sh shot drivers on Florida interstate. What the? <laughs> so according to the report, this woman went out and shot drivers on the Florida interstate because she believed God told her to do that. That's what emotional would, emotions would do for you. When you hear these people saying, God told me to tell you this. God told me this. God told me to do this. Is that I can feel it from God. You better run. You're in danger. When they say God told me, then that's one club you don't want to join for sure. She, according to the report, she went out shooting. And all you had was a moon going between the sun and the earth. And she thought God wanted her to go shoot somebody. Smoke on that one. When you hear these people saying, God told me, God called me to preach. God told me to do this. They're talking about the devil. They're not talking about the true God. They're talking about their fallen God, Satan. And then they get real emotional. The Lord called me and told me this. And then because they get emotional about it, you think it's real. And lo and behold, no one is surprised about this one. Not one person on earth is surprised about this story. They even managed to make an eclipse about racism. They made it about racism. The moon going between the earth and the sun was racist or about racism. Why is this from CapitalBnews.org? From Capital B, eclipse fever is gripping black Texans. While the event will cast a brief shadow on life in Texas, it sheds a light on scientific fields that have been mainly out of reach for black folks. Lord, Hammer, everything is about the blacks. Now the black can be and, 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 and make it difficult for them to get into science. And you know what's going to happen next? We're going to lower the standard. They are going to lower the white people are going to lower the standards for science, and they're going to let the blacks in, and it's all for science. No more good science. The eclipse, the black need the eclipse to be, be smart enough to know about the eclipse. Come on, man. White people, I told you, they see you as superior. They blame the weather on you, now they blame the eclipse on you. Why don't you start acting superior since they truly believe that you are? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. A spiritual battle like I've never seen before. Before the next two hours, hour and 15 minutes or up, two hours and a half or whatever, I have a story about Dearborn, Michigan, in the United States of America. According to a report on Friday, the Muslim Allah Uaba people, they had a rally and they were shouting death to America. In America. You know it's over. This wasn't overseas. 
in Allah U Abba land, it was in America. Death to America. What do you think is about to happen? I didn't hear Biden or anyone speak out against it. I haven't heard not one person in government hold a press conference or, or go on X and say, you know what, uh-uh, this is too close for conference. I have that coming up for you. Death to America and Israel. In America, I'm, a, I'm accustomed to reporting it when it was happening over at Allah Uaba land, over there across the sea. It has hit our borders now. It's here. And Allah Uaba people don't play. They're serious about Allah. It's, a, it's in our country now. And the Biden administration, according to the report, they want the votes. It looked like a lot of these people are not going to vote for the Democrats because they're upset that the Democrats are supporting the, um, at least some of them, the, uh, Biden at least, the war and they're supporting Israel. And Allah, well, all of people don't like it. They're tick. And, but the Biden administration wanted to vote, so they're not denouncing death to America at this point. I haven't heard. My country is gone. It's unrecognizable now. America was an amazing country. I'm telling you. All these things that you hear happening now in America, it wasn't, it wasn't so back then. And how can you recover from this? What, how do you even begin to recover? Death to America? In America? Out loud? They're not even hiding. I guess there are a lot of Muslims in Michigan, at least Dearborn. Rosa, is Rosa a first time caller? No. Is she first time? Rosa out of the Netherlands. Rosa. Welcome to the show. You're on the air. Can you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. See. Hi, Jesse. Uh, I had a question. Okay. Um, um, I've been listening to you since uh, 2020. And um, I started um, because I, I didn't, at first I didn't understand what you were meaning. And then later on I was, I was starting doing the silent praying like you tell everyone. And I was I was starting doing it, and my life uh, keep on going better and better. But um, I had a, a psychotic attack. I'm not saying like it's because of the silent praying, but I had a psychotic attack, and then they put me in a clinic for three months, and they give me medicines. And after that, um, yeah, my life totally changed. Um, I had fear again because. We, when I did a silent prayer, the fear went away. But uh, when I got the psychotic attack, um, I, I, my life became, uh, came with fear again. My parents were, were also really scared, so they told me like you need to uh, stay in your medicines. And but I, the medicines were messing me up more and more, and I was, I was seeing that. And um, yeah, I also stopped listening to you. There was something in me telling me, like, uh, don't listen to him. What he's saying is not right. Maybe that's the reason you got the psychotic attack. But I know that's not true. But there was just something in my mind messing me up because I, I didn't understand why I got the psychotic attack all of a sudden. And your, your question for me is what? Um, how can I get over my uh, mental issues? Because... Um, I am now medicines, but the medicines, I'm just gaining weight, to be honest, and it's not helping me. Um, I'm not, I didn't have a psychotic attack anymore, so maybe that's working because of the medicines, but um, they uh, they forced me into the medicine, like with um, with lawyers, because 
they said my state of mind was not good. So um, I every Monday uh, gives me like a, a, a vaccine of the of the drugs and not pills because if they give me pills, I I don't take them because I don't want to take them. So they I need to go every month to the doctors. So they put it in my body. And yeah, my question is, uh, how can I get over the, my mental uh, state without uh, using medicine? Are you aiming to find a quieter spot? There seems to be wind blowing. Oh, yeah, I can find a quieter spot. Wait, I'm sorry. I will find a quieter spot. Oh, okay. Oh, amazing. Do you hear me now better? Yeah, let's try. Let's see what happens. And so describe describe what a psychotic attack is. I mean, what happened? Well, well for me, it was uh, I had it three times in one year. The first attack, um, I felt like my family was going to kill me. So I felt something in my mind was telling me uh, they were going to kill me and I couldn't sleep for days. And um, my parents... Uh, um, I called my parents. Like they, I when you get a psychotic attack, they put medicines in you so you forget everything what happened. But my parents could tell me, like they told me, you were thinking that we were going to kill you. So we called the doctors, so they could um, put you in a clinic. And um, what I can describe of it is that if you get a psychotic attack, you think stuff that are not in the reality. Right. So you think things that are not the reality. You're not in reality, actually. Do you live with your parents? I Now again, I do. How old but are I, you? I used to live on my own. How I'm old 22. Are you? Oh, you're 22. Um, I don't know your your situation because I'm not a doctor. I'm not there, so I can't advise you with medicine, doctor-wise stuff. But I can yes. tell you that for sure, all those voices that you were hearing in your head... It was happening. Yeah. It always has been there, but they were getting louder and trying to stop you from being still and overcoming. It was never you, but because you mm-hmm. you believed that they were you, you reacted to them. If you can learn and practice not reacting to those voices, but just watch them, don't call them you, don't argue with mm-hmm. them, but just watch them so you can go through it. Then they would disappear from you. They would be taken away. But anyone who sits still and become aware of the ego mind, the voices and the yeah. emotion, they will start to really yell at you, scream at you, tell you not to do this, not to do that, because they don't want to depart from you. But you got to slowly but surely practice not to overreact, but just to watch them and not, and not call them you at all so that you can suffer through it. You got to learn to suffer in quietness. Yes, I hear the story about somebody. I was watching a church uh, show uh-huh. of yours, and you, were telling, and you were telling that there was a 20-year-old guy who was doing counseling with you and that he was doing the silent prayer, but his his the mistake he was making was he was doing the silent prayer, but he couldn't die. I think I had the same experience because um, before, uh, when you start doing the silent prayer, you don't are not immediately in it. But when you start getting it, uh, the demons start attacking you more. And I feel like that happened to me. And maybe the voices came because of that, because I was doing this. Um, I was in the silent prayer, and I believe the voices that were in my head because Absolutely. I can remember. You because I, I can remember the day before uh, having my attack happening, I was in doing the silent prayer, and I, I, I never felt that way because it was really different from the days before. You, you always say, like, do it every day, yeah. and uh, there will be a day where you get it. And I was getting it that day, and I felt amazing. But yeah. the next day, so no, uh, I don't know, all of a sudden I was thinking my parents wanted to kill me everybody wanted to kill me and i i couldn't understand and i reacted to it like you said 
So I got into it, and that's what brought me to a clinic eventually. And when you get it, like, when you get one uh, attack, it's, it's, you can get more eventually. Yeah. But I haven't had a attack anymore. But I really want to connect with God again because I, I, I didn't, I stopped listening to you. I don't know. I felt a, a little bit embarrassed. I always used to call your show, um, but I felt embarrassed because of my uh, psychotic attack, and I felt like, yeah, maybe I am, I cannot heal anymore. But I think it's possible, so I think I'm just gonna try doing the silent prayer again and not be scared of the uh, thoughts or the demons that can come with it. Well, the one thing for sure, and without a doubt, the devil is fear. He's fear. He has fear. And anyone that has fear is of the devil. And so, again, I want to encourage you, don't call it my psychotic psychotic attack. Uh, watch it yeah. and don't give it a name at all because it's not yours. It, it, it's truly spirits in the imagination and emotion that made a home in your body, and they do not want to leave. And they're going to, when a person like you are serious about dying, spiritually dying so you can have life, they are not going to yeah. like it. They are not going to like it. They're going to scream. They're going to yell. They're going to do, you're going to feel all this fear in your body, and you're gonna, it's going to be screaming at you. And if that doesn't work, it's going to go and find other human beings that they've already made a home in, and they're going to send those human beings to try to stop you as well, to attack you. But you must... Yeah. You must be willing, no matter how difficult the moment gets, you must be willing to quietly go through it. And that's what God is yeah. trying to save you from. He's trying to save you from the hell that's in your mind and body and make you free. Mm -hmm. it, it's not you at all. So I encourage you, if, if you do go back to the prayer, I encourage you, stop calling these things my psychotic attack. Don't call them. Don't yeah. give them any more names. Don't argue with them. Just quietly go through it. And they'll tell you crazy things like, oh, your parents want to kill you. This person want to kill you. Look at the world yeah. looking at you. And they're talking about you. And it's going to give you all yeah. kinds of crazy things. But you got to stop identifying with it. And, 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 and God will save. It will feel like, as this young man said, that he felt like he had jumped out of a plane without a parachute. And and every was, every yeah. identity that he had was disappearing from him and he felt like there was nothing left. And, but it's the fear which was on the devil overwhelmed him and he had he snapped out of it. Yeah. And and I would like to advise everyone who's listening to keep on doing this silent prayer because it really it 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 will work again for me, but it, uh, back then it was really working for me. I I had my place. I had a job. Um, my uh, the, my boss was giving me promotion. Everything was going well. I was always listening to the show, judging nobody, yeah, and forcing nothing on nobody. I was just it was my path. And then that happened to me. But <laughs> I I think it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. But things happen. It, it does, and I want you to know that when that happened, it happened then. It's not happening now. And so right now is a brand new day. And every moment yes. is a brand new day. It's a brand new start in life. So just start whenever you, you know, again, I'm not giving you medical advice because I'm not a doctor. No, no. But they're going to, uh, they told me that um, in, in four months, they're going to put me off of the medication. So I only need to take it for four months. And right. then I'm off every medication. Amazing story, Rosa. Uh, I, I'm hearing yes. stories like this from men and women around the world because some people, they do want, they want to know God. They want to die from the far self. Uh, I, I wish you well. Let me know how it goes, all right? Thank you very much. And have you, a nice day. And, and you have nothing to be ashamed of. That's the devil feeling the shame. It's not you. So the devil yes, makes you great think. listening to you again. It was a long time, but um, I am open to your shows again. So I will always be listening. Bye-bye. Uh, bye now. Back in a moment. Books that are amazing. Highly recommend you get them. Seven Guaranteed Steps to Spiritual, Family, and Financial Success Guide. 
even if you're not starting a business, but you have a job, or you're on welfare, it can help you if you do. Be doers of the word, all right? From rage to responsibility, from rage. That's why I write about, in the first chapter, especially how I overcame. Scam, how the black leadership exploits black Americans. They are using them, and blacks are too willing to be used. And then my last book, The Antidote, Healing America from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. They are all amazing books, and they are helpful. Go to rebuildingtheman.com if you want an autograph copy or call I was just with you a moment ago, and uh, we're not skipping a beat. Um, no confusion is happening at all. And I know, I think we may have a couple of Super Chats. Is that true? Super Chats! Super, super Chats. We do have Super Chats, indeed. Uh, you can Super Chat by going to buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk, or donate via Bond JLP on Cash App, or if you want... A tax deduct to do tax deductible donations, which is not super chats, that you can go to rebuildingtheman.com slash donate, rebuildingtheman.com slash donate, or you can uh, call 1 800 411 Bond, 1 800 411 2663. Good morning, Nick. Hey, good morning, Hake. American anchor, baby. Pleasure as always. The Hake Report is coming up after the Jason Lee Peterson show, and then uh, Joel Friday TV, and then American anchor, baby. So JLP asked me to read some super chats you for you guys. I, you mean I asked you? Oh yeah, you mean Nick I asked you to the the host asked me to read some super <laughs> uh, chats. What's up? I think they figured it out. For such a time as this, bought a coffee. Why is it that the blacks can freely use the N word, quote unquote N, with other blacks because they think they come from West Africa, Nigeria? Oh really? Oh. <laughs> But a white person does not have that privilege. Sounds like black privilege, black supremacy. Uh, I think it's a cope. <laughs> Don't say black. Did the super chat say black supremacy, or are you saying black supremacy? They said black privilege slash supremacy. Okay. I just didn't. I didn't know you were saying. That. I'm like, don't say it. Black supremacy, <laughs> James. No, no, no. I don't believe doesn't, in that. Doesn't stuff. sound right coming out of you. No. <laughs> black excellence. <laughs> uh, nice. Thank you for such a time as this. I didn't know that the N word came from Nigeria. I just thought it meant black. Right. Like Negro or Negro. Negrito. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's only if you're friends. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sick Ramen, thank you for such a time as this. Uh, it's because they're a mess. They want to be special, to have their own thing. Kind of like the flat earthers. Shout out to them. Anyway, Sick Ramen bought a coffee. You know, Negus means king. Oh, wow. They were kings. Sick Ramen bought a coffee. Um, hey, Jesse, what is wrong with the blacks? A guy went to Chipotle by my house and shot an employee for not giving him extra guac. True story, by the way. Laughing face emoji with tears coming out. What the? That's wild. I wish I could respond. I wish Jesse Welcome could respond. is expensive. What? I know. <laughs> yeah, we're cheating. Him. I just realized the, the. I didn't like him downside, telling me to do this. The downside of, <laughs> of this. <laughs> Let's hope no one's asking him any specific questions. I know. No Mo thoughts bought a coffee, but he's listening, so don't worry. You're not getting totally cheated. Yes. I listened to yesterday's show today, and somebody asked about taking the Lord's name in vain. I heard somewhere that an example. That made an example that made sense to me. 
When authorities like kings or priests say to people, God wants us to defeat our enemies in battle. Just my two cents. Ah, so there's, so there's claiming that they're using God's name, all in the name of Jesus, all in the name of God, whatever, to do something evil or think that God wants me to win this race. God guided my aim so that I shot better than anybody else. Maybe, maybe. maybe. Interesting. Thank you. No more thoughts. Thank you. Stefan donated on Cash App. Bond JLP on Cash App. Tag best, me. Best show, on, best show and church on this side of heaven. Thank you, Stefan. Amazing. As always. Amazing. Amazing. You know, we didn't do the... Uh, we didn't do the... Uh, country Western. Nobody reminded me. Not one. Terrible. It's Country Western Tuesday. Give us a second. Why no one reminded me? Uh, we're, we're, we got our stuff to worry about. <laughs> Lines are full, guys. I can't. Nick messed up my screen, so now I don't see anything but you and. Oh, my bad. He's bad. Jesse, oh. I. I, f I feel like I've cheated the people out of your super, your super chat responses. All right, let's start over. Okay, for such a super time chat. Super chat. Super chats. Super chat. Super super. super. Chat. For such a time as this, bought a coffee. Why is it the blacks can freely use the N word with other blacks because they think they come from West Africa, Nigeria, but a white person does not have that privilege? Sounds like black privilege slash supremacy. Because white people uh, uh, have fear. And you can't blame the blacks that this is happening because if you didn't have fear, you would do what you want to do, and it wouldn't. You wouldn't think about how someone else is going to react to it. So it's only because white people have fear. So it's not the blacks' fault. It's your fault. As adults, each individual is responsible for themselves. When you're 18 and over, you're responsible. So if you decide, well, you're going to be afraid to live your life. You can't blame the blacks for that at all, and the blacks can't blame the whites, and the whites can't blame the Jews, and the Jews can't blame the Palestine, and the Palestine can't blame the Allah Uaba people. You're responsible for your life. So white people have fear, so that's why. Amazing. Sick ramen, butter, coffee. But that doesn't mean pop off at the mouth saying the N-word all the time. Right, and I mean, the N-word is not even, it's not even necessary to say it anyway. Just because they say it, why do you feel the... The necessity to say it. Yeah, that's rebel the rebellious spirit. Right. And you're not supposed to be controlled that way either. It's just a word. Why even? I, 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 the only time I say that word sometimes with these guys, we were joking in the office. Yeah, me too. But other than that, I, oh, I never I even think about that word. Same. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> or but when anyway. the blacks bring it up because you said D, when, if a person says, DEI mayor or something like that. They're like, you might as well say the N word, you coward. But when when the blacks respond that way, just watch them responding. That's them. It's not had nothing anything to do with you. Those are angry people responding to their own hell inside of them. Why make someone else hell yours? Yeah, they're trying to pull you in. They're just try right. They're trying to pull you in. Sick, Amazing. Sick ramen bought a coffee. Hey Jesse, what's wrong with the blacks? A guy went to a Chipotle by my house. And shot an employee for not giving him extra guac. Guacamole. True story, by the way. Laughing face with tears. What uh <laughs> Anger. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah. No more thoughts about our coffee. I listened to yesterday's show today. Somebody asked about the taking the Lord's name in vain. I heard somewhere an example that made sense to me. When authorities like kings or priests say to people, God wants us to defeat our enemies in battle. Just my two cents. Interesting. I don't know yet what that means exactly. And I, and I have heard what, what other people say it means, but I don't know at this point. Maybe when, that, when God told, the lady says God told her to go on a shooting spree because of the eclipse. Well, that was definitely the devil taking the name of vain, <laughs> and she believed a lie if yeah. that happened. What the right. amazing. Stefan says, best show and church on this side of heaven. Thank you, Stefan. I appreciate it, man, and thank you for your support as well. 
Retro Memento. Good morning, sun emoji over on Rumble, a Rumble rant. You got to know how to rumble. Morning. Thank you. Evgeny Crosby with a couple of diamonds, and I'm censoring them. <laughs> he says, Sleazy Joe saw the eclipse while getting changed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he said Maybe. getting <laughs> changed. <laughs> changed. Nice. Locke bought a coffee or latch. One thing that I have wondered is why no one has ever remarked that the first black U.S. president, Barack Obama, was descended from an African, has no genealogical or cultural connection to the American slave experience. In fact, his father might have been from tribes that sold other tribes. What about, what was the question? It's just not necessarily oh. a question, but just a remark that nobody wondered why no one has ever remarked that the first black U.S. president, Obama, is from an African. Not, he's not an American. He doesn't come back from slavery, meaning he doesn't. He's, oh, yeah, I've heard from, people comment on that why, at the time he was running and why he was president. And his dad may have been from a tribe, this person speculates, that sold other tribes. Who knows? I don't know, but amazing. Thank you. And thank you, guys. Let me just double check now. Midnight Nudson, Newton. Midnight Newton bought three coffees. Biden has us Uber drivers picking up illegals from the border, which I need to go down there anyway to smoke on this biblical question. Don't do drugs, <laughs> kids. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have a question. If we identify ourselves with sin, is all sin the same, or is there different levels of sin? For example, is stealing a penny from a bum <laughs> the same <laughs> sin as having an abortion? I saw this question asked on a podcast the other day, this person says. Midnight I'll Newton. put my little two cents in on Sunday. I can't respond to the biblical question right now. and That is related to the biblical question. Thank you, though. I appreciate it. Aries' son bought three coffees. Women be looking so fire emoji. Then, boom! Explosion. You find out her, her whole life is ruined by Satan. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Aries 1 gave a diamond on DLive. And thank you, guys. I do Th believe you. That that's all for now. Amazing. <laughs> Oh, amazing. What did you think of Rosa's call from the Le Neverland? I didn't catch the whole thing, but it uh, was interesting hearing a lady who sounded like she went through a psychotic breakdown. But yeah, she's praying and watching thoughts and, and getting better. Everything was going well until she got to that point. I'm hearing that a lot. And what I realized is that the spiritual ego death is 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 scary. Is is is, is uh, uh, getting rid of all identities, and, and there are people who get into the point where they're like going through the the hard rough of the death, but the, because the devil has fear, the devil is fear, right? And they can feel an overwhelming, and I know what they're feeling like too. They can feel an overwhelming amount of fear. But then they start, because it's so painful in the body, they start to believe that it's them, and they, they give in to the devil, so they have to take a little longer. Yeah. Dang. But the devil, and he, like Rosa was saying from the Neverland, he makes you feel ashamed. Oh, now you can't call Jesse show anymore. You should be ashamed. <laughs> but that's the devil doing that. That's not her. He makes you feel like when you're dying from that, that you are really dying. But it's really all of your false identities that you think are you. They're evil spirits. And there are many evil spirits inside of all of us with different names. Yeah. And they don't want to leave. That is mind-blowing to me. You reminded me when you suck, talked about the lady who talked about her saying, oh, I can't talk, call into the JLP show anymore. Right. There are people who have said, oh, I don't have anything to say. And then they have the most to say. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's very interesting. Like, it's very uh, relatable. Uh-huh. And then well, what's so important, though, is how identified we are with the devil identity, thinking that it's us. Yeah, you can't even That catch. is mind-blowing to me. That's literally mind-blowing. We're not our thoughts. We're not our feelings. We're not our body. We're not our... Cigarettes. We're not our alcohol. We're not any of those things. 
I interviewed two very interesting people yesterday on the Father's State. And so I deliberately ask, ask, who are you? Who are you? And everything they describe was not them. <laughs> I'm an actor. I'm a comedian. I'm a this. I'm a YouTuber. I'm this. I'm that. Uh, and, and none of those things were any of them, were, were not them at all, but they identified with it as though it was them. Yeah. And it would be hard to die from that because those are another spirits, evil spirits that you call you. Caught up in like a pride. A mess. Vanity. I got to ask you this, and then I will get back to the caller. Okay. This menthol story. I didn't know, I forgot about cigarettes, I guess. Uh huh. And I didn't know, well, I used to know, though, now that we're talking about it, I didn't know that menthol, menthols had such a hold on people. But I remember growing up in Alabama, uh, and I knew several of my young cousins and things that smoked cigarettes, and they, they smoked Pall Mall. Hey, I, I knew that Pall Mall was a cigarette. Uh, I knew that Pall Mall was a cigarette before I even knew <laughs> what cigarettes were. <laughs> before you knew your name. <laughs> yeah. And Pall Mall was a strong cigarette, right? It had oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. I, I think it Maybe. was. I'm not sure you that because I never smoked. Yeah. But I know that they used to really smoke. But I didn't know that there was a fight over not banning Pall Malls. Menthols. Not yeah. Pall Mall, but menthol. This story from the Washington Examine. The FDA first proposed banning menthols in 2022, but the proposal may be delayed until after the 2024 election as Biden weighs his support within the black community. Watch this compilation. I want you to comment on it. Okay. Health officials say... For years, anti-tobacco has argued black Americans have been disproportionately targeted by the menthol industry, and President Biden is preparing to do something about it. The ban on menthol cigarettes has been in the works for nearly a decade. As part of Biden's efforts to reduce health disparities highlighted by the pandemic, the FDA is expected to ban menthol cigarettes and cigars, which is preferred by 85% of black cigarette smokers. Well, that's because the, the blacks, not all, not all, not all, but most of them are not working on themselves. So they have a lot of emotional problems. Uh, you know, they're angry, they're up and down emotionally. So I can see why they are doing it. Yeah. Although I don't think of blacks as regular cigarette smokers for the most part. And, and who are the regular ones? Asians and whites are like high stress people. They, they stress, they work, and they're judgment quietly judgmental so they have to smoke more and so but this story Charlotte was saying but pot that, yeah blacks do more pot but you're right they do as far as menthol cigarettes specifically right. go blacks like those because they have a nice flavor easier on the throat and uh i heard that gays and women also like menthol cigarettes <laughs> <laughs> and so they want to ban the cigarettes because the blacks said that it's a problem the blacks are not saying that it's a problem. Many of the blacks like the menthol cigarettes. Oh, they don't want them banned. Right. Oh. Because they're claiming, the Biden administration is claiming that the, uh, the cigarette companies are targeting the blacks, but they're only targeting because the blacks like them. It's a mutual attraction. They're, they, they're both attracted to each other because blacks like the menthols. And so if you find out that blacks are liking the menthols, you're going to advertise catered more towards right. the blacks. But now they want to put it off until after the election. It looks like the black should know you. Why are you put it off after? You want me to vote for you? Then you're going to give me my cigarette back. I hope that I Trump. I want to take my cigarette away. <laughs> I hope Trump points that out. That they is want, such a powerful point. Yeah, because that's just, uh, that's trying to trick them, basically. Yeah. We're going to ban your cigarette. But since election times are here, we're going to ban your cigarette because we want to help you save your life. But since the election time, we need to vote. So we're going to put off the ban until after the vote. <laughs> Terrible. They're, then they're going to be mad, and then, uh, <laughs> which they're already mad, like yeah. you said. Out, and Washington Examiner reported Al Shopton has come out against the ban, saying it would give police more reason to target black people. Watch this from the Wall Street Journal. Menthols remain a huge part of the cigarette market. 
They account for about a third of all cigarettes sold in the U.S. Amazing. <laughs> so the blacks are pitiful with everything? Yep. They need somebody to look out for them for everything? The reason is... It's all about the money. Follow the money. See how they say that these cigarettes come and give it out, stop it, that being our money. Eric Garner, remember that fat guy who said, I can't breathe, he's the original I can't breathe guy in yes. 2014? Out of New York. He, he had a history of selling Lucy cigarettes because New York has a high ta- puts a high tax. city of New York puts a high tax on cigarettes. Right. So he sells them and undercuts no tax. And so he undercuts the legitimate marketplaces that are selling cigarettes. So he sells like individual cigarettes or is used to before he died. He did. And so I was wondering if he was selling Newports. The blacks are, do a lot more crime with theft and selling, selling stuff uh, black market, I guess, <laughs> on the streets. <laughs> and so the, pla- the police are going to be targeting them because there's a new, a new thing outlawed. So the police are going to be uh, looking at them. It's just another reason for the police to be looking at them. So cigarettes are illegal? Well, the menthol cigarettes, for example, in California are illegal. But, but if why cigarettes are illegal when pot is legal? Because cigarettes cause long-term things like cancer and all that stuff, according and, to the reports. And uh, pot is not linked with cancer at this point. It's not it's linked, linked with, with everything. Else. You get high, you go out and have accidents on the road and all kind of stuff. Yeah, but they like, they like people being uh, high and bums, but... Cigarettes have has run the, its course of, in terms of making people bums. Actually, people who do cigarettes more like work, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I have forgotten all about cigarettes because now the cigarette smokers, they smoke in this little tube thing that kills the odor of a cigarette. Uh, so you never really see the cigarette or right. smell it. But sometimes you can smell that odor and you know somebody's smoking something. And it's right? outlawed in California to be smoking indoors in restaurants and stuff. Yeah, I so. know about that. Yeah, they kids, are, kids get into the flavored, nice flavored, like menthols and fruity cigarettes. And so they're trying to ban all that stuff. Fruity vapes and all that but stuff. But the black need somebody to take care of them about everything. They ain't going to take care of themselves about nothing. Yeah. What a mess. I got to take a break. Two more hours to go. When I come back, your phone calls and super chat. Hate news, not the fake news, and I'll be back in a moment. I recommend you get a copy of my book, From Rage to Responsibility. I write about how the spirit of anger was taken away from me 29 years ago. I forgave my mother who tried to turn me away from my father and I returned to my father and through him, my father on earth, and through him I was able to return to God. No man or woman can return to God unless you go through the son. And men are sons of God. They may be weak, pathetic examples of it, but it's the spiritual order of life. God in Christ, Christ in man, Man over woman, woman over children. So get from race to responsibility. I write about that. Go to my website, rebuildingtheman.com for an autograph copy or call 800-411-BOND and donate to my nonprofit, Bond, the Brotherhood Organization of a New Destiny. We are rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. A whole lot of mess going on in the world. This is the end of hour one of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. It is Tuesday, Country and Western Tuesday, April 8th, a- April 9th, A.D. 2024. GLP will be right back to your calls. The lines are full, guys. Appreciate you hanging on there. But first, fake news, not fake news. Um, our greatest president, Donald J. Trump, clarifying his stance on abortion, also known as abortion. In a video posted yesterday on his YouTube channel, as well as his Odyssey and elsewhere, our greatest president, Trump, said abortion restrictions should be left to the states, and he declined to support a national limit on the procedure of killing the babies in the womb. His position comes weeks after he suggested he'd be open to a federal ban on abortions around 15 weeks of pregnancy, something that pro-life, anti-abortion, right, so-called rights groups have called on Trump to endorse. 
a national ban around 15 weeks as he campaigns to win back the black the currently black on the inside white house and make it white on the inside wash white as snow with jesus's blood he's uh trump has been trying to make strike a balance between keeping his base happy and trying to sway swing voters who fall for the so-called right to abortion our greatest president's attempts to navigate his stance on abortion is shining a spotlight on the republican party's mostly rhinos continued struggle to present a united vision on the contentious issue of abortion as president trump appointed three conservative supposedly conservative they're not conservative so-called supreme court justices who ultimately helped overturn the disgraceful decision from 1973 roe v wade and updated it to be correct give it back to the states trump took credit for doing so in his statement yet the high courts opening up opened up a uh, their ruling opened up a pandora's box texas's abortion ban faced lawsuits Alabama's IVF in vitro fertilization ruling that children, embryos are children, uh, caused confusion. One one woman has even been charged with murder. Wow. At play, as these issues play out in the headlines in the courts, demon rats, I call them, not Democrats, made gains by making abortion the top issue of the 2022 midterm. Shows Shows you how evil they are, appealing to the evil in women. Republicans have struggled as they head, head into the general election. It's one survey that found abortion is the top issue for one in eight voters. Talk about dummies. What a mess. This has been, there's been years of trying to overturn Roe v. Wade by Republicans. And at all levels, including Trump, they're struggling to navigate the political fallout because the women are mad that they don't get to kill the babies in the womb. So now they have to appease the base who want... Uh, pro-life to win, and the other voters who want uh, to be able to kill the babies in the womb could cost them some of their seats this November 2024. What a mess, huh? Meanwhile, another so-called president, Crooked Joe Biden, he has a new plan on that rollback on the student loans mess. He announced a student def- debt relief plan yesterday, Crooked Joe Biden did, that could help, quote-unquote, more than 30 million borrowers, leeches, I call them. The Black on the Inside White House said that they would clear all student loans for over 4 million people out of the 30 million, right, borrowers. Eliminate accrued interest for 23 million borrowers and uh, whatever accrued interest is. Maybe you guys know. I don't. And forgive 5000 or more uh, for 10 million others. $5,000 or more for 10 million others. It's probably a drop in the bucket, but it helps, I guess. Biden said his new proposal, a scaled back version of his 2020 campaign promise, would help the economy by giving people more buying power, more buying power, and encourage them to continue being irresponsible. Critics say student loan forgiveness is unfair to taxpayers who didn't take out the loans and reportedly warned it could cause universities to jack up tuition costs. That's right. When you subsidize people's so-called education, that education increases in price. The plan still needs to be finalized, is likely to face legal challenges that could take months to resolve. I'm James Hake. Now back to The Jesse Lee Peterson Show and your calls, Hour 2. Nighton, the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family 
by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the second hour of the show today. You can get involved by calling 888-7753-888-77 Jesse. My biblical question for this week. Why do you call yourself a sinner? Why do you call yourself a sinner? Why? Why do you call yourself a sinner? Um, you can listen to the show if you land up at a beach or you're just busy and, and whatever else, right? Um, you can listen to the show on your iPhone or iPad. You can podcast all the show, but you can be listening live while you're working out, no matter what you're doing, by calling the listen line at 641-793-1500. Seven nine three one five zero zero, and if you um, d- don't forget to donate and have your comments read out loud at buymeacoffee.com, buymeacoffee.com slash JLP talk, buymeacoffee.com slash JLP talk, or rebuildingtheman.com, rebuildingtheman.com. It's Tuesday. It's his second hour of the show already. Tuesday. It is Country and Western Tuesday. Bring back, bring back, oh, bring back my country to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my country to me. What (laughs) dog? Let the dolls out. Who let the Amazing. dolls out? Amazing. <laughs> that call from Rosa out of the Netherlands, it was deep. It was deep. And if you didn't hear it, podcast it so you can hear it. Maybe you'll be helped by it. I have talked to many people who are really stuck with letting go. Overcoming the intellect, overcoming false identities, stop calling themselves anything, and live. And then, and the death of that is mind blowing because you're so identified with it. So, Rosa, I don't know about the medical part, so I'm not a doctor, but stay with it, stay with it, stay with it. Really. The evils, every human being on this side of heaven is possessed with evil spirits, more than one. You are not your thoughts, you're not your body, you're not your mind. You're not your feelings, you're not your emotions. You're really not. I know you think you are, so suffer and die from it, but I mean, catch hell, whatever. Let me go to, is it Eli or Eli? Eli, first time call out of Michigan. Eli, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Yes, uh, Jesse. Thank you for your for your your show for your participation in our life. You're welcome. You know, yeah. This is the this is one of the greatest shows since Billy Graham. Amazing. You know, I've been in the United States. I live in the United States. I mean, I came here and. and um, 1978, and I am an American citizen, and uh, I work for a big one of the big three companies. I have all kind of friends. Well, where I where I came from is Romania. Okay. So when I came here, when I came here, I don't came here illegal. I was in a refugee camp for nine months. I was behind the barbed wire. For nine months, waiting for a visa for United from the United States, and uh, all my life I tried to be right. We was back then. Back there, we don't have no difference between what kind of color is uh, this guy or that guy. Or this guy. Yeah, yeah. But when I came here, when I came here, it's sad because I became a slave owner, which is my people were slaves since I know. They were slaves to the Tatars, they were slaves to the Huns, they were slaves to the Romans, 
those slaves to the Turks, you know. And uh, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Now I'm retired. I'm retired from from uh, from the work that I used to work. I worked 36 years. But uh, I don't, I don't understand how how can we do to get get along together. Well, because we are just humans, Jesse. Yeah, you're right about that. But good is never going to get along with evil, and evil will never get along with good. And as soon as people understand that it's a spiritual battle, it has nothing to do with color, nothing to do with male or female, but everything to do with right and wrong, good versus evil, when people realize that and they will overcome evil, and those who will overcome evil would get along, but those who just not, who will not overcome evil would not get along with those who overcome evil. You can see it in your family. Family members who do not overcome evil cannot deal with, they don't like family members who overcome evil. It's just the way it is. Evil hate good, but the good does not have any hate at all, so it just lives its life. And that's what I, people have to realize that it's not physical, it's spiritual. But then when I came here, when I came to the United States, uh, I, used, I used to live in Detroit. Uh, I, have a, I have a friend. I mean, I, I, well, I never look at different the colors or, right. or the, the way you speak, the, or the way yeah. you dress. The yeah. way you, you, this, you, you said talking about Dearborn. Dearborn, they do that every year. Every, every year they do stuff like that. There's nothing new in Dearborn. And the police in Dearborn, they, they are the ones they, they uh, uh, take care of them. They will be, you know, right behind them, make sure nobody bothers. Yeah, yeah. And this is America. I don't came to America to change the rule. I don't came to America to bring the communists and the fascist socialists from Europe. I came to America to enjoy the freedom and to be close to my God, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amazing. What a mess, huh? I'm surprised, Eli, that uh, human beings are willing to give up freedom. I didn't know it was that easy to just give up freedom. We live in a country where at one time you have freedom, and that freedom is gradually being taken away. And, and most people seem to be okay with it. I'm surprised by that. It's it's amazing because you know, I can I can I'm I'm, I'm retired. I'm in North Michigan, and I moved from down below. That's what we say down by Dearborn because that's where I used to live. And I moved up north. It's it's more re, re, like retired guys. It's not right. It's yeah. not too much, you know. <clears throat> yeah. But. Uh, Everybody was talking about back in seventies and sixties, and that that was uh, that was bad. No, right now was bad. Yeah, absolutely. Back Detroit used to have this. I I remember the way I remember Detroit used to, used to have Hudson and Crowley's and and uh, and Chicago Steakhouse. I mean, big time. People yeah. were coming before Christmas to to shop in Detroit and yeah. Detroit. Yeah, no, it was just a boom in Detroit. I remember that too. Yeah. Eli, I really appreciate your call, man. It means a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate Jesse. Thank right. you. All right. Call me again. Keep it going. Thank you. All Bye-bye. right. Bye now. 888-7753-773. Stuart is a first-time caller out of uh, New Jersey. Stuart, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, uh, pleasure uh, to talk to you. Thank you. I've uh, I've only been watching you on YouTube for the past month or two. Yes, and I've loved it. I love the debate. I love when you put people, corrected people, and I've really been interested in the discussions you've had with different uh, pastors and preachers. Uh, they really uh, interest me, and the reason I'm calling is to answer the biblical question. What do you? Uh, ca- why do you call yourself a sinner? Okay. Well, I call myself a sinner. First of all, look, I will tell you that I am born again uh, of Jesus Christ, of the Holy Spirit, and um, that happened over twelve years ago. And 
that's just the just to let you know who I am. But um, the reason I call myself a sinner is not that simple as I am a sinner. It's that I am a sinner saved by Christ. Now, everyone has their own theology, no matter who your pastor is or preacher is or what congregation you belong to. And two things pop out in Scripture to me. One is that there's a situation in the New Testament where Jesus is talking to a group of his believers. These are saved people, born-again people. And he demonstrates that which one of you, although you are evil, would give your son a stone if he asked for bread, leading to how much more will your Heavenly Father give you? So here he is talking to the most faithful believers probably of all time, because they're sitting in his presence, and he's telling them that they're evil. So that leads me to another piece of scripture that is repeated several times, that our ways in Proverbs, our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. Uh you know, I could continue. I could preach a little but, bit about it. But, but why do you why do you call, why do you call yourself a sinner? Because I still sin. It, it, even though you you say you've been born again, you still sin. Y- yes, I do. Um, amazing. I want to I want to respond to it, but I can't. I got to wait until Sunday. But I do, Stuart, appreciate you responding. Can I to, ask you one more question, please? You, you're responding to the biblical question. Go ahead. Okay, um, I find it interesting that you talk about white people, black people, different groups of people, and include Jewish people as not being white or black. Now, I've kind of always felt that way, too, and I happen to be a Jewish person, so it's kind of an advantage in my point when it comes to dealing with race relations. And I'm just curious why you see it that way. Um, you say why, you ask why I don't call Jewish people white? Yeah, or black. Because, I, <laughs> that's an interesting question. I never thought of Jewish people as being white or black. I thought they were Jewish. Right, which is an ethnicity. Right. And how do how, you how, define how, ethnicity? How do you define that in relation to the Jew? Well, the in America and most of Europe, Jews fall into two categories. One would be the Ashkenazi, which would be what I am, which looks like just your standard white person. If you saw me walking down the street, you would say there's a white guy. Um, then you have your Sephardic people who are more look more look and speak Spanish, and those are the two main groups. So there is a difference. I met you know. Uh, um, yeah, Ashkenazi people speak uh, Yiddish often, which is German and Hebrew combination. But how am, I, how am I supposed to know all that? And and how would I how would I know? I mean, should I be should I be calling Jews white? I don't think it matters. I think it's whatever makes you comfortable. It doesn't bother me. I mean, but um, I, 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 and I understand that. But you, you did take note of it that I mentioned the blacks, I mentioned the whites, but I don't mention the Jews as whites. Should I be seeing the Jews as white people? I don't know. It's an interesting do, question. I really think about it a lot myself. Do you consider because, yourself white? Yeah, I consider myself white based solely on my appearance. But but under your whiteness, you you see yourself as Jew. Yes. Oh, so you white and Jewish. Correct. Do you, do the Jews know that you're white? Do they see you as white? That yes, they do. However, in Israel, from what I understand. And from the very few Israelis that I've spoken to, they would say no. They look, they look Middle Eastern. They be, they behave from the Middle Eastern culture. They don't bathe like we do. There are big differences. So they would consider someone like me a descendant of traitors, basically that had left, you know, anti-Zionists that had left Israel 
going to Europe, eventually to America, they would say, um, you know, unholy, you know, so, you know. So you, just, uh, so there are segments of Jews that don't like other Jews? Definitely. So is it, is it all races? So were you born in Israel or you were born in America? No, I was born in New Jersey. You born in America. I'm an American. So, yeah, I'm an American. So you don't have a dual citizenship and all that kind of stuff. No, I don't believe there is such a thing as a dual citizenship. Oh, oh, dual citizenship. Right. No, no, no I've never uh, been to Israel, and from what I understand, there is a birthright that you can have when you're raised in a synagogue. You can have access to that, where you could be sent to Israel for a period of time. Uh, you know, on, on the courtesy of the synagogue. But, you know, that was something that never interested me. I didn't believe in God growing up. I, I felt I felt that I felt I was an atheist. Let me ask you this. And I so, got to run, but why haven't you okay. gone to Israel? I have no desire to. Really? Well, I, I, I have had the desire to walk in the Holy Land, to walk where Jesus walked, to see where the ancients came from. I didn't but tell right you. Now, it's an amazing experience to go through that. I, I went to Israel. And to oh, yeah? walk into the Holy Land where Christ walked and see uh, things that was in the Bible and all, it was amazing to me. I can imagine. I would recommend if I were God. Yeah. And if if you die and you want to go to heaven, one of my requirements right. would be that you would have to have gone to Israel while you on earth. And if you didn't go to Israel first, you can't go to heaven. Well, I'll I have to won't, make sure I get to Israel then. I won't let you in heaven. <laughs> All right. Well, so go to Israel, I man. That. I'd love to. Should I wait till this war ends because yeah. I don't want to get shot up just for leaving my own safety? Safety. Yeah. No, I'll wait till safety. the war ends. But go to Israel. Right. All right. Thanks for sure. Thanks for referring Thank to you, the Jesse. biblical question. I put my two cents in on Sunday. Thank you, sir. Okay. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Denny from Bulgaria. Denny, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Good day, Mr. Peterson. How are you doing today? All is well, Denny. How are you? All is well. Thank you for taking my call. Yes, Mr. sir. Peterson, I'm, I'm calling because I was watching the Fallen State, an old episode of yours. you having some doctor specialized in abortion. I heard that on your programs before. You asked them about what's the point of killing a child, and they always tell you it's not a child, it's a fetus. Right, you know? yeah. And yeah, and I'm calling because of that. Fetus, as a word, is that's the Greek word. The Greek word is fetus, and it means giving a birth to a child. Those two are synonyms. So just because the word is from a different language doesn't mean to, so it, it'd be a good thing next time somebody tells you that, just tell them that it's the same thing. A child and a fetus is the same thing. It, so it was absolutely ridiculous to hear that. That's like me saying that I'm not calling Jesse Lee, I'm calling Reverend Peterson. But it's, <laughs> the, uh, it's the same thing, right? He black. <laughs> he black. So, he black and and that, that's a child. It, it, just because it's a different word doesn't mean it's a different thing. I just wanted to call you and and tell you that. that I think it, it might suits you well for the next time somebody says something ridiculous like that. It's just common sense, too, but I appreciate that, uh, Danny. Thank you for that. How do you feel about abortion? Uh, most of the times, I'm against it. If uh, I have to choose between the life of the mother and the life of the child, I will choose the life of the mother. And why Why are you against it? From from a practical point, if I have to choose between the mother and the child, let's say there are complications or something else, if only one can be saved, I'd rather go with the mother. But why are you against abortion, period? Because we need more people. <laughs> For what? <laughs> In general. <laughs> we need more white people or people, period? Well, there are a lot of white people here, so we need more people here. But more <laughs> white, I'm, I'm okay with all kind of people, but let's say white people. So does it bother you when when uh, women kill the men, children in her womb? Does that bother you? Oh, uh, you mean like me personally? Right. 
No, I don't care about that. So you don't care about abortion? No, I mean, me, if it's my wife, I, I, I will be against it because I don't want it. But if other people were doing it, uh, and like it, bot- it doesn't bother me. I'm not okay with it, but it doesn't bother me. And why are you okay with it? Because it's pointless, and it, it removes the discipline. Now, why are you having an abortion? Because I don't want a baby. Then why did you have sex with the man? <laughs> that, that baby didn't get get over there by the mail. You lay down with that man. Why did you do it? Ah, because, you know, that happened. But no, that doesn't happen. People need to learn discipline, and the government is always taking care of those people, which is not okay in my book. Amazing. So that's why, in general, I'm against abortion. Okay. You know, it removes the discipline from the people. Well, I appreciate now, that. that said, Go ahead. Yeah. With, with that said, Mr. Peterson, I know how busy you are. Kind regards to your audience and your colleagues, and God be with you, sir. You too, man. Thank you for that update on the fetus. I absolutely will use right it, on. and I appreciate it. Right on. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. G- goodbye, buddy. Amazing. 888-7753. Seven seven three. Let me give you an example of the state of my country. And this is a perfect example. My country is gone. And I know there are people who have been in wars, you know, military people, you don't want to hear that because you feel that you sacrifice your life for it and blah, 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 right? But the reality is, it's gone. Now, Hopefully, the great white hope will be elected in November of this year, and he will he will bring back some of the physical things that will make us comfortable in this country again, as far as jobs, low taxes, you can buy a house again, uh, people will go back to work, the border will be closed. All those things is a, 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 a good things to happen, right things to happen, but the country is gone. The mentality of the people about the country is gone. Most Americans of all colors at one time loved the country. I truly remember when even black people, the blacks loved America before the uh, civil rights movement. So-called, no such thing as civil rights, by the way, but the civil rights movement was the worst thing that ever happened to the blacks other than abortion. But I want to give you a perfect example of the state of my country. Then I'll get back to your calls and super, 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 super chats. This is from Post Millennium. San Francisco will be hosting. You're not going to believe this. They want to take away your cigarettes, right? But according to the Post Millennium, San Francisco will be hosting its first ever Wee Week. Its first ever Weed week. Pot week. You know, amazing. A celebration amid uh aimed at embracing marijuana culture in the city. Watch this from K-R-O-N. Watch this. SF Weed Week will feature seven nights of seven growers releasing new strains in seven licensed lounges in dispensaries. I believe. Growers are our rock stars. I know that strains are our celebrities, and they deserve that kind of treatment. These lounges deserve to be packed. Celebrating SF Weed Week is just like beer week and restaurant week and all these other things. As a matter of fact, restaurant week and, and weed week should be at the same time. Because yes, yes. what are you going to do after you finish smoking? You're going to be hungry. 420 is an organic event that has come together, not because the city says it so, but because of the community makes it happen. We project in 2024 and 2025 that it will project $789 million into our economy. It's all about the money. And that was Mayor London Bree, a black mayor of San Francisco. Now do you want the blacks running your country? Do you still want them running your cities? Look what happens. Celebrating weed. Think about the trouble. It's already bad in San Francisco. Drug addicts, so-called homeless people, violent crime, everything, everywhere. And she's making it sound so good. Might as well celebrate on, on 
uh, restaurant day or something like that. And it's unfortunate that most adult human beings have given up being responsible for their own lives. They fall for stuff like this. They become addicts because they refuse to take control of their own life. And then you have an evil female like that woman, London, London Breed, or so-called mayor, coming out celebrating it. A wheat week. And everybody with common sense know that weed today is not a joke. You know that already. But there is no love. Human beings are evil until they start to change from evil, their hearts change from anger to love. Human beings are evil. There's no good in human beings. And you hear some of these dumb uh, politicians saying, both Republican and Democrat, oh, you got to look for the good in people. What are you looking for the good in people for? And there's no good in human beings. There's no good in human beings. Human beings are evil. Look how they treat one another. Look how they treat themselves. This is about money. This female London Breed can care less about the people of, of uh, San Francisco or anywhere else, really. Weed is not a joke, folks. Why is this from Bright Quest? Some people who use marijuana may experience symptoms of psychosis, including paranoia, delusions, and hallucination. Why is this from CBS? What is the noise? Our kid's brain was gone. That was Robin Marie McIntosh's reaction when they spoke to their son Madison in March. The 24-year-old who lives in Phoenix was acting strange. He's been talking gibberish. He's been telling people that he tried to commit suicide. He's, he's been saying all sorts of weird things. Madison's brother filmed this video that same night. My brain. What have you instilled in me? What have tuning out the noise? It was like the lights on, but no one's home. It was the strangest thing to recognize somebody. You know, I know that. That's my son, but you don't recognize him. They learned Madison was vaping multiple times a day. At the hospital, doctors diagnosed him with cannabis-induced psychosis. What the heck is that? A study out of Colorado found a 77% increase in suicide deaths among 10 to 19 year olds with marijuana in their system. Amazing. But they're going to celebrate a week of weed week. Where will you take control of your own life and stop listening to the experts? Don't listen to me or anyone. Take control of your own life. Take care of you. Nobody else care about you. Really, nobody else care about you. Your own parents don't care. They encourage you to smoke weed. And, and, and this stupid London Breed woman, female, she want to do it during the rest of her day because you know where you got to go when you smoke weed. You're going straight to hell. Quick break, 888-775-3773. Back in a moment. have a counseling service and I have to admit thanks to God it is the best counseling service on this side of heaven I counsel with men and women families individuals around the world most people are unhappy they're miserable they have rough lives they're depressed suicidal young and old of all races I understand I know why and I do understand it because exactly what's happening in me is happening with everybody outside of me, inside of them. And I've noticed that with those who really, really, really want to understand, they overcome it just like that. Out of one counseling session. If you need counseling, you can go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. Best counseling service on this side of heaven.
couple announcement. Couple announcement for personal personalized shout outs. Birthday shout outs, wedding shout outs, anniversary shout outs, encouragement shout outs, whatever. Go to Cameo, C A M E O dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. C A M E O dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. And I will do them for you. Personal shout out. All right. And also, check out our store, Amazing Merch at rebuildingtheman.com slash store, rebuildingtheman.com slash store. We have amazing mugs and cups and the American Tar Baby shirt is back and all kind of stuff. And go and make a donation to my nonprofit bond, Rebuilding the Man, Rebuilding the Family by Rebuilding the Man. Go to rebuildingtheman.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson or call 800-411-BOND to make a donation, 800-411-2663. Or you can mail it in. You can mail it in, P.O. Box, make it out to BOND, B-O-N-D, P.O. Box 35090, L.A., California, 90035. P.O. Box 35090, L.A., California, 90035. Also, the Hake Report coming up at 9 a.m. this morning from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific Time. The Hake Report, H-A-K-E Report.com. The guy with the good hair. And then after the Hake Report, Joel Friday TV, he black. Joel Friday TV at 11 a.m. Pacific Time. And at 12 noon, the American Anchor Baby. On fire, energy given to him by God, the American anchor baby. All right? A lot of stuff going on. So we need your support, all right? We got a lot to do. We're building a network. We have an entrepreneur academy. We have meetings first Thursday night with men only, Thursday, Thursday night with ladies only, Sunday morning with everybody and their mama. We have counseling, best counseling service on this side of heaven. And if you need counseling, go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-BOND. Family, individual uh, counseling by phone, Skype, or walk-in. Let me go quickly to Nick, out of first-time call out of California. Nick, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning, Nick. First time caller, long time listener. Thank you. I appreciate you calling. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I want to know what we're going to do about the ideological count, uh, capture of the school. I see Berkeley High School is 97 percent left wing. Um, <clears throat> I'm a civil engineer, and the only place I can avoid the social justice war is my living room. And so your question is, what are you going to do about it? Well, what could we do about it to um, get some um, more balance to the schools? At this point, nothing. You have to leave it and let them suffer and catch the hell they, they're already catching and maybe go start another school or something like that. But there's nothing you can do about it at this point because the Republican government, the Democratic government, the, the media are not on your side about this at all. They want the total destruction. So it's gone now. So far gone. I would recommend you just move on and live your life because there's nothing you can do about it. I sincerely think you're 100% right. And I've already made a number of moves to do that. Uh, namely disappearing off into the forest where I like to hang out and snowboard and stuff. Yeah. yeah. What about Chris Rufo's school in Florida? I don't know about that school at all. How old are you? 47. Oh, so you're not in school. I wouldn't, you're not, and you, are you, do you have kids in school? Um, I was not able to have kids. No, I would just leave, I would just go and live my life and leave people in their hell because most people don't want out of their hell. And it's not your responsibility or my responsibility to save people at all. So go live your life and just wish everybody well. 
and leave people in their hell. You're completely right. And I thought that with multiculturalism that we were going to try to all get along. No, that ain't um, going to happen. And I'm perfectly happy with a multiracial society. My biracial best friend did pass away at 45. Yeah. But I think you're exactly right. And I thank you for your time. I don't want to uh, babble. All right. Thank you, Nate. I appreciate it, buddy. No, you got to move on. The one thing I want to encourage all of you to do, stop trying to save people. You can't, I, you, and no human being, no money, no physical place or thing can save another person. Why don't you stop trying? Stop playing God and leave people in their hell. Do you see God trying to save them? And God can do all things, right? He can, at the blinking of an eye, bring perfect peace on earth. Everybody can be at peace right now. You don't see him doing that, right? He only gives it to those who want it. He only gives it to those who want it. Scott, there's one line open, 888-7753-773. Scott out of Illinois. Scott, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Thanks for taking my call, Uncle Jess. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I called about a month ago, first time, and I went and forgave my father out in West Virginia. I drove to his house. He was a guy who was kind of like Clint Eastwood and Rambo, and I got thrown out. Didn't receive too well by his third wife. So and uh, so, your father threw you out, or, or the wife threw you out? Uh, the wife, the wife. I drove 500 miles. I, you know, I was sitting at the kitchen table. My father just got in there, and uh, he made me a pancake. And you know, I started telling him I forgave him and everything. And the wife was overhearing, and she freaked out, threw me out. But uh, he hasn't called me since. But uh, you know, I still got faith in him. Anyway, um. Why and did you, been why didn't to, you uh, let the wife throw you out? You should have told the wife, right, go he, sit down. He's too weak. To, he, he's so weak he can't control his, his third wife. So why didn't, anyway, you, why didn't you tell her to go sit down? It's not her business. Right. Exactly. That was the, that was, and you had told me that at the time and, and in rethinking stuff I should have. But, but why uh, you, you know, didn't? You, probably out of, out of fear, out of trying to be nice, which I shouldn't be because you should never be nice with, with evil, you know. So you but, uh, you so you can't call your father weak because in that moment you were weak as well. Yeah, I think yeah. Okay, <laughs> I got I to eat that. <laughs> um, I did get a hold of my mother, um, and uh, I got her. I got a hold of her on the phone. I was texting her forever, saying I forgave her. She finally called me, and um, that actually went over really good. Uh, she was. She said she was. I made her month or week or year. And she actually received that very well. She's with her third uh, husband. And, uh, yeah, you know, that went over pretty good. So I've been feeling much better. Nice. You know, since, since all that, I've been doing the silent prayer. And my whole body, I mean, I feel way better. I got I stopped smoking weed, drinking, porn, everything. I became a whole new person. And it's, you know, it just feels amazing. Amazing. <laughs> but now all you have to do is make sure you stay with the silent prayer so you can practice being present rather than lost in your head thinking about a so-called past or future. Yes, sir, right. And and so that you can die from the ego death. The light of God will get rid of that old nature now that's in your mind and, and emotions. Yes. And so make sure you practice staying present and let life right. happen. It, you haven't seen anything, Scott. It will only get better. It's going to be amazing if you stay with it. You got to stay with it, endure to the am. end, and it's just going to get better for you, man. Thank you. And I'd also like to get your thoughts on, uh, I've been a tradesman since I was 15. I painted my first house, uh, and uh, uh, it's a passion I've had. As my father was an aircraft mechanic in the Vietnam War for the United States Air Force and an in-flight crew chief, I think I got, you know, his DNA obviously is in me, um, and I've been obsessed with tools my whole life. I just want to put a shout out to all the young fellows out there and brothers that uh, learn a trade, stay out of college. Yeah. I mean, di yeah. my whole life, I, you know, I've been, av I've been making great money. I'm so sought after people are calling me every day. It, my, 
every week, every month has gotten better and better every year. Just never stop pursuing my dream of being a tradesman, repairing homes, maintaining them, uh, yeah. collecting tools. Don't lose your tools. You know, in some awful marriage, I learned from my father when I was 13, we were driving in the truck, and he was telling me about his second wife. He had four, four other sons after me. And, uh, you know, they took all his tools, and it just resonated with me. I thought, why do they take a man's tools to give to the woman <laughs> for her to sell? And, you know, I started off with uh, my stepdad gave me a little old metal toolbox from the 50s that he had with some hammers and odd wrenches in it. And, uh, you know, I bought my little first Sears toolbox about three feet high when I was young and filled it and just kept buying in a bigger toolbox, a big, you know, well, let just, me just never stop. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I got to run, but you're absolutely right. Now, I would highly recommend that men not go to college, but That's go and, and get a trade. As long as you That's can right. work with your hands, you will never be hungry. You will always have a roof over your head. And you'll never be hungry. Scott, thank you, man. Call me again, Thanks, all right? Seth. All right, buddy. I will. God bless. You too, Bye-bye. man. He's right about that. In the good old days when boys were boys and men were men, they went to trade school or their parents taught them a trade, especially their, fa- especially their father or grandfather. He taught them a trade. And trades are needed in America today. Like, not even going north, and he's right. You will always be busy, especially now. And I, we have an a entrepreneur academy where we're teaching young men, what men, young and old, how to start businesses or if they're already in business, how to keep it going. And uh, it's amazing. And these guys are starting their own business. They're like, what the? They make a book of money. And they thought they had to go to college. You're a fool if you think that. You're out of your mind. You're not thinking. All the things that college is doing are ripping you off, putting you in debt, building your ego, making you think you're important and you ain't worth a dime. A dime. Do a trade or just start your own business. We even start a credit union where those who are part of the class, if they didn't have money, I mean good credit, we loan them the money, they pay it back. They keep the credit union going. I encourage you to start your own business. When I was growing up, that's what it was all about. Start your own business. Get a trade. This college thing wasn't popular back then, but they decided they wanted to control the people. They want to make money off the people. And they said, you got to go to college. A high school degree is not going to work anymore. And then they said, a trade is not going to work. You need college. And like most people, you're not in control of your own life. You did what the evil one suggested. Now you're in debt. And now you want us to pay your college fee, your college debt. Super chat. Super, super. Super super chats. Stan69 gave a diamond on DLive saying crime rate is high because of the Eighth Amendment. What's the Eighth Amendment? I I looked it up out there. It had to do with uh, high bail, high uh, fees and stuff like that, and cruel and unusual punishment, I think. That's not the reason crime rate is high. Crime rate is high because of people committing crime with no consequences. Excessive bail. No police or anything. Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. Yeah. They took all that away. You're absolutely right about that. No, no, no. That's what the Eighth Amendment is. What? Excessive bail. Well, we need that back. Nor excessive fines. Excessive. Meaning that... Too much. The bail was too much? Yeah. Excess means too much. Meaning that it costed too much for the bail? Right. No, it wasn't. No, but the, this, no, the, the Eighth Amendment says you can't do excessive bail or excessive fines or cruel and unusual punishment. Meaning that somebody commit a crime and they got to go to court the pun- and they go to jail, but they want to get out, but the bail bond is too much. Right. And what's wrong with that? If it's too... If it's it's against the Eighth Amendment, the oh the Eighth Amendment said don't charge him too much. Right, but, but if you never went to jail, would there ever be an issue? Right, you wouldn't. I'm sorry. No, you would not. Oh. Anyway. Thank you. But thank uh, you, Stan Sixty Nine. Yeah, thanks, Stan Sixty Nine. I don't think that's why the crime rate is high, though. What? 
He said the crime rate is high because of the Eighth Amendment. Oh. Thank you, Stan. Uh, so, oh, maybe they're using the Eighth Amendment to get rid of money bail. I don't know. Anyway, thank you, uh, Stan69. Yeah, That's appreciate it. Thank you. Someone bought a coffee. Hey, Jesse, you know how you always say we are not our thoughts and feelings? Is it true also that we are not our actions? Sometimes I have to remind myself I am not my actions because my actions come from my thoughts and feelings. What is that? I mean, if you're not your thought and feeling, if you didn't have the thought, you wouldn't have the feeling, there would be no action. Right. So, uh, is, it, is it true we're not our actions? I, I don't understand the question. Make it a little clearer for me, because I can't respond because I don't understand the question. But just know you're not your thoughts, you're not your emotions, you're not your body. And if you didn't have the thoughts, you wouldn't have the emotions, and you would be doing the actions. I hope that helped. Yep. I think you answered the question oh, without okay. directly answering it. All right. Thank Even you. you didn't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone bought a coffee. I got a hot rod Ford and a $2 bill, and I know a spot right over the hill. There's soda pop and the dance is free, so if you want to have fun, come along with me. Say, hey, good looking. What you got cooking? What's about cooking something up with me? Hank Williams, happy Western Tuesday. Thank Blue you. Blue heart, <coughs> salute, cowboy smiley. Oh, amazing. Country and Western Tuesday. Ah. And I would have sung it, but I don't know the, how it goes. Cause me either. I don't know Hank Williams. But thank you. Where's Hank Williams now? Uh, He's in heaven. <laughs> I rest my can He did. <laughs> amazing. Uh, standing on silent, standing on silent prayer book. Bought 15 coffees. Very generous. Thank you. My 25-year-old daughter will be moving in with her boyfriend even after I told her and him not to. Now they want to visit me next weekend and expect to take a guest room here pretending they are married. The Pope is pissed. <laughs> what should I... Sorry, kids. What should I... He wrote <laughs> the it. Paul and Ted. <laughs> what should I do about them and this visit? My ex-wife is, of course, supporting their decisions. I know why the Pope is Ted. Why? Oh, he said his ex-wife is supporting it? He supports their decisions, moving in together, stuff like his that. His ex-wife does? Yeah. His ex-wife does? Yes. Oh. And what's the question? He's like, what should I do about them and this visit? Because they want to visit him, and they're expecting his to use his spare room as if they're a married couple. And he doesn't know if he wants them to stay in his room or not? Apparently not. I don't understand that. He's mad because they're living together when they when he told them not to. They're but, twenty. She's twenty five. I don't know how old the boyfriend is, and they're tr they want to visit him next weekend and expect to take a guest room, pretending they're married. But if he's mad that his daughter is living with a guy unmarried, why would he let them come and stay in his house? Why is that even a question? <laughs> right. Right. What? Oh. No, that was a question. <laughs> <laughs> that was a question. If he, Just think about it. You can't do anything about your daughter going out in the world, staying with whomever she wants, and let her suffer in her own hell. But aren't you in control of your own house? Amazing. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Prepham Paul says that accrued interest is because Obama raised the student loan interest rate. This is from Hake News. From 3.5% to 6.9%. When interest rates were actually low, monthly rate monthly payments don't keep up with the high interest rate. But if the if the people had not fallen for this stupid idea that you needed to go to college, then no matter how high or low the rate went, it wouldn't bother you at all. Get a trade. People who go to college are dumb. They have no common sense. They just have a big ego thinking they're important because they got an expensive piece of paper. It means nothing. Thank you. Uh, Urinal Chills, a paying subscriber on uh, Rumble. Thank you, Rumble. We need Urinal Chills. Thank we, you, Urinal we, Cheers. We need a JLP trip to Israel. Although I ain't flying anytime soon till they stop DEI yeah. and make sure the planes stay glued together. I am really concerned about flying now. Really. It's crazy because it looked like a bus ride and you just don't know what's going to happen. And I get several invitations to come speak and come and do this, but 
and some of them on my tape, but it's not. It's it's different now, and plus, you have these affirmative action people, reparation people, with no talent. They've taken away all the uh, pilots, nearly all the pilots that know how to fly. They put in the blacks and the so-called women and all that females who have no talent at all. I don't. I mean, every time I look up now, some plane falling. I just saw a, a plane taking off or something the other day, and the people looking out the window, and the flame falling, falling apart. Terrible. Can you imagine being on that plane? Your life is at risk. It's not like even on a bus or a train. It's still at risk, but at least you're already on the ground. But you in the sky, and you got some person flying a plane or worked on a plane that has no idea what they're doing because of their color or being a male or female. I'm concerned about flying that. I used to love to fly. What the? Yeah, it was fun. Special it used to thing. so much fun. It's gone now. Now they're letting all the riffraff. My country's gone. Come on, man! I remember when this, when they started hiring the blacks based on color, and they put them in the air traffic control thing and all that, and I was talking about it. And some black guy from Philadelphia or somewhere. Phoenix. Maybe Arizona. He was like, no, Justin, that's not true. I wonder what he has to say now. <laughs> Living in denial. If the planes are not falling apart, the people fighting on the plane or screaming. We played a, a woman the other day, her son and I played a woman screaming like the devil, looking like a wild chicken. Yeah. A black female on the airplane. Who scream on the plane? Scary. Kick her off. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be openly possessed. When I come back, <laughs> one more hour to go. I'm coming straight to the call. Thank you for your super chats. And we'll finish up upon those who come back. One more hour to go. Hake is coming in with hate news, not the fake news. One line open, 888 jesse Back in a moment. I just want to say thank you for everything that you do. Um, you you absolutely changed my life for the positive, and I, I just want to thank you. I was a um, 29-year-old beta living at home with my mom and just was living in fear and I in doubt, and I was I couldn't hold down a job. And then I found you, and I started listening, and I started just being more at peace. And um, I forgave my mom, and I forgave my father. And it's like right after that, everything just changed in my life, and I was able to get a good job, and I moved out, and... I live on my own now, and everything has just changed, and I just want to say thank you, and I appreciate you for spreading that message. It really is a positive message. Amazing. That's good, man. I want people to know God loves us in ways that there are no words to express because you have nothing to compare it to, right? Stay with your silent prayer. You haven't seen anything yet. It gets better. The radical transgenders are mad that the Catholics don't believe in them and that the NAIA is not uh, supporting the, the female to want to be males in their sports. NAIA is kind of like the NCAA, but cheaper. It's private schools, mostly Christian schools, or many of them religious anyway. What a mess. A black actor has been punished for alleged domestic violence on his girlfriend. Marvel actor, Marvel movie actor. And Ethan Crumbly's parents get their manslaughter, quote-unquote, sentencing today. He's the one who did the mass shooting up in uh, Michigan at age, like, 15 or something like that. And they're, they sentence his parent, they're sentencing his parents today. What a mess. This is the end of Hour 2 already of the Jason Lee Peterson Show. It is Tuesday, the 9th of April, A.D. 2024. There is one line open. You can call in right now during Hake News, not Fake News. 888-77-JESSE, 1-888-775-3773. It's free via Skype, even if you're overseas. So call in during the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. Uh, after the JLP Show, The Hake Report, and then Joel Friday TV, and then American Anchor Baby. 
So make sure you catch all of us if you can. Con uh, the far left female run out let the skim on these Catholics, not for trans affirming care. Who gave their take on gender theory? Gender theory. The Vatican. Yesterday, the Catholic Church rejected so-called gender-affirming surgery. What a euphemism, huh? No, it's the opposite. Uh, and the idea that one's gender can be changed, the Vatican laid out their stance. That's, the, that's like the capital of the Catholic Church or something. Laid out their stance in the infinite dignity doctrine. Infinite dignity. Which had been five years in the making, outlines what the Church sees as uh, threats to humanity. It received Pope Francis' approval. Advocates for LGBTQIA+, so-called Catholics, criticized the Vatican's opinion as outdated and warned that they could lead to anti-trans violence. Sickos. Remind me of uh, a certain caller of mine who calls into Hake. Uh, the uh, document comes months after the Pope, so-called Pope, affirmed that transgender people can be baptized and sort of serve as godparents, godfathers and godmothers, and supported, he supported blessings for so-called same-sex couples, by the way. What a mess. And I'll tell you about the NAIA uh, during the Hake Report, probably. That's my plan. Let me skip down to the black actor. NAIA is a sports league, basically. Kind of like the NC2A, but not as elite. Black actor punished for DV, who won't be spending time behind bars, though. Jonathan Majors, a New York judge yesterday, according to the ladies at the skim, sentenced the former Marvel actor, he black, to a mandatory 52-week in-person DV, domestic violence program, for allegedly, according to them, assaulting and harassing his former girlfriend, Grace Jabari. Two Bs, J-A-B-B-A-R-I. Uh, Grace, Jonathan Majors, could face jail time if he doesn't comply. During the sentencing, ungracious, ungracious Grace? Is that what she is? Is she ungracious? Ungracious Grace Jabari, the, the ex-girlfriend, said, He's not sorry. He has not accepted responsibility, and he will do this again. Wow, evil woman, sounds like. Ethan Crumbly's parents and the attack on the Second Amendment and on whites. Uh, Jennifer and James, or James and Jennifer Crumbly, According to CNN, the parents of the teenager, Ethan Crumbly, who killed four students, reportedly, in the 2021 school shooting in Oxford, Michigan, uh, they are set to be sentenced on manslaughter charges today. If they haven't already, maybe they've already been sentenced. They each face up to, faced up to 15 years in prison. Sentencing represents the end of a dramatic saga that set a precedent for who could be held responsible for a so-called mass shooting aside from the perp, the perpetrator. Both parents were found guilty in separate trials this year for allowing their 15-year-old son to have a gun. Ooh, the horror. And ignoring signs of his spiraling mental health. It was the first time the parents of a school shooter had been charged with such serious crimes, even though they did not pull the trigger. And even though blacks do more mass shootings, do, do their parents get held responsible? I don't know. I'm James Hake. Somewhere in the world today, men have got to stand up strong, take the truth about themselves to understand what went wrong. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Nights in the races with truth. Instead of dividing them with lies, we're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the third hour of the show today. You can get involved by calling 
Seven Seven Jesse. My brand new biblical question this week, and it's a doozy. Why do you call yourself a sinner? Why do you call yourself a sinner? You ever wonder that? Why do you call yourself a sinner? We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on justinleepeterson.com. And you can also be listening to the show while you are working out, whatever you're doing, anywhere in the world, because we are heard around the world by everybody and their mama. Everybody and their mama. So you can be listening if you're busy doing in a different time zone and everywhere. I counsel with a person out of Austria. I'm like, what the, where is Austria? And so even if you're in Austria, you're in Japan, China, anywhere, Russia, you can be listening to the show on your iPhone or iPad by calling the listen line at 641 641- Seven nine three one five zero zero six four one seven nine three one five zero zero. And to donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com, buymeacoffee.com, or Bon JLP on Cash App. Bon JLP on Cash App. Bon JLP on Cash App. All right? And um, it's Tuesday. It's the third hour of the show today, last hour for today. It is Country and Western Tuesday. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my country to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my country to what me. What dog? <laughs> Who let the dogs out? Woo. Amazing. 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 Eight eighty seven. Seven five three seven seven three. Let me just give you a couple of examples of why I say my country is not coming back. I know people don't want to hear, but I got to tell you. But you can live in my country free. You can literally have peace on earth, or you can stay in the hell on earth that you're already living. You can stay in your hell. You can literally stay in your hell. First, let me show you what the great white hope had to say because the Democrats are trying to trick him and saying that they like really pushing this abortion thing and they think that the great white hope, Donald Trump, doesn't have an answer to it. Let me see what he has to say today, by the way. It's country western music. I mean, Tuesday. ISIS has spread like cancer. Another mess I inherited. See that? Amazing. Another mess. What a mess. Here's what the, so when you hear the Democrats pushing abortion, and they're doing it for the vote, because they're, they're saying to women, you vote, if you want to have abortion, you can't kill the baby. If you don't want the baby, kill the baby. If you don't want to have the baby, kill the baby. They want the vote. And they know how to manipulate the women, make them feel good about killing the baby, right? And so they're trying to make you, treat Donald Trump to make you think, well, he's going to stop you from having abortion. He's not going to stop you at all. He let the states decide what to do. Let y'all vote on if you want the abortion or not. This is from CNN. This is Donald Trump, and I'm telling you this, making America great again, right? This is from CNN. Donald Trump said Monday that abortion rights should be left to the states offering his clearest stance yet on one of the most, quote-unquote, delicate issues in American politics. Watch this from Donald, Donald Trump. Under my leadership, the Republican Party will always support the creation of strong, 
thriving and healthy American families. We want to make it easier for mothers and families to have babies, not harder. What could be more beautiful or better than that? The Republican Party should always be on the side of the miracle of life and the side of mothers, father, their beautiful babies. And that's what we are. Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion and abortion rights, especially since I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. You must follow your heart on this issue, but remember, you must also win elections to restore our culture and, in fact, to save our country, which is currently and very sadly a nation in decline. That's for sure. So that's where the great white hope stands. That's his stance on abortion. In case somebody ask, because some people only watch liberal news and they only get one side of the story, they believe it. Rather than not taking sides at all, they just believe it. But you leave it up to the states. And my country is in a mess right now, and it's getting worse. And if you do vote the Democrats back in again, you can hang it up. You can literally hang it up. Breitbart is reporting that all... Not one, not two, not three. But according to Breitbart, all 371 locations of the 99 cent store, 99 cent, not even a dollar. Even though it is a dollar, but not even a dollar. What the? All 371 locations of the 99 cent store only stores are shutting down with company executives blaming the difficult decision on so, such causes as inflationary pressures. Watch this from NBC. As 99-cent-only stores from California to Texas prepare for their final curtain. I didn't believe it. Longtime customers in communities that rely on them the most. In a normal place, this is around 40 bucks. The loss of a reliable bargain source is felt most by those who need it. That needs to stay. 99-cent-only issued a statement Thursday, citing various reasons for the closures, ranging from the pandemic to changing consumer demand to shoplifting. Amazing. They're stealing from the 99 cent store. I remember in my whole lifetime, well, since I've been in California, I went into a 99 cent store maybe twice. And then for some reason in my mind, and all thoughts are all lies all the time, I didn't want to buy the thing from the 99 cent store because I thought it was used stuff. Or I thought it was stuff that came from other locations where they got old. And you didn't really want it. But that was my mindset. I was wrong. But the 99 cent store closed or closing. And they're stealing from the 99 cent. You ain't got 99 cent? Come on, man. You don't deserve it if you ain't got 99 cent. What a mess. 99 Cent Store was founded in 1982, according to Hake. That's from Google. The 99 Cent Store. Now, you know the country is in bad shape. And it's not unusual. Oh, I think Hassan would say, oh, can I tell about you see the people stealing groceries and stuff? Hassan would tell a little... Tell you a little story real fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy. You know, these um these I nine cent stores there, there's people just walking out of there with, you know, seven, eight bags. Also the Rite Aid too. There's a there's a <laughs> there's a Rite Aid uh, yeah. d- down the street. And I was in there and the guy just walked out with just eight just eight his hands full of stuff. And I'm looking at the security guard like, You're not gonna do anything? He's like, I don't get paid enough to worry about that. <laughs> I was like, amazing. They have cleaned out my, uh, what's the name of the other store you just mentioned? Yeah, Rite Aid. Rite Aid. They clean them out. It's not unusual anymore to walk into a store and see 
people walking out with stuff and they ain't pay for it. And I, and I'm sorry. Now I'm sure other races are doing it, but every time it's been, I've been seeing the blacks do it. Other races are doing it too, but the blacks are always doing it. They're just going there now and stop freely. That's their reparation. The 99 cent store. 91, 92, 93 cent, 94 cent, 95 cent, not even a dollar. They're not even asking you for a dollar. You saying it happened to be a blast as well, Hassan, that you see? Yeah. I'm sorry? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. It's hard to say it. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're going to get in trouble with the blacks. <laughs> What's wrong with the blacks? Um, <laughs> Breitbart is also reporting that. A hundred dollar grocery haul in twenty nineteen costs almost hundred and forty dollars today, nearly forty percent more for the same common items. Watch this from ABC. The visual is what really creates the contrast. Mm. So this is 2019, Michael. This is what you got in 2019 for $100. Come over here. This is the current day, what you get. And you see, there's an entire section over here that's missing because you're getting about 30% less these days for your money. So wow. back then, you could have done the frozen food, some meats, some hot dogs, some steaks, some strawberries. You see, that's missing from over here because $100 then will now cost you about $100. $130. So you wanted to buy all of that then. Today it would cost you $130. Wow. If your budget is $100, then you're sticking to $100. Oh, and you're man. getting less. Amazing. That's the United States of America. That's not overseas somewhere. It's not a third world country, though we are a third world country now. Did you know we are a third world country now? Did you ever imagine that one day you'd be living in a third world country and you haven't moved out of the country? It's like you didn't move to the third world country. The third world country moved to you. And remember I said that I don't like flying anymore. I'm very concerned about flying because and then you don't tell it when an accident will happen. It just, it seems so possible now. And then fly, flying on the airplane is like riding a bus now. People yelling and fighting and screaming and the devil coming out and airplanes falling apart and it's not unusual now to look out the window, the airplane falls apart. The, the pilot could be black female or, or LGBT or whatever without, a, without any idea how to fly. And then... Uh, the, the towel builder, when they tell you how to land and where to take off, could be some black person over there that don't know how to read the meter. They're looking out the window trying to tell you which land, which landing thing to come in on. It's not safe anymore. And I think about the fact that I remember when I first started flying, I couldn't believe I was up in this. I'm like, what am I doing? Up in the sky, trusting somebody f f flying a plane. Suppose they have a fit. Well, they all of a sudden get upset. It's over. But I really am concerned about flying now. Even to take a trip home to see my folks. It's getting bad on the planes. And, 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 and the planes are in the sky. They're not like down here on Earth, right? And when you fall, you're falling from a far off place. Even the blast for Trump are uh, catching hell on the airplanes now. This is from the blaze. Delta Airline passenger recorded video of an airline officer kicking him off his flight and threatening him with, a, with being placed on the airline no-fly list if he doesn't comply. Watch this from X. Oh, you don't have that? Yeah. All right, I'm going to have to come back to it. I thought you had it. It's, it's way down at the bottom of the third hour. So you have it? Yep. Okay. And I'll just call Atlanta and speak to corporate security. Okay. And if you do come on the jet bridge, flip the shirt in, outside, in and out, right, so that word doesn't show, I will have to zip in the whole aircraft. No. 
I'm sorry about that, sir. It's just Delta Palace. You cannot wear it. And they did advise me also you will be on the no flying list. So you want to come out on the jet base? Let's just keep the shirt and get everybody else to wear it. You have yet to show me something. All right, it's a policy. policy, and you can call, and we could go ahead and look it up online, right on the jet page, the computer. If it's online, just pull up your cell phone. But that's not inconvenient. No, 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 no. You're making this an inconvenient, because last time I checked, I live in the United States of America with the First Amendment, freedom of press, freedom of speech, or freedom of religion. Do I not? Ma'am, do I not? No, 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 do I not? Ma'am, do I not? Okay. Do I not have the freedom of press, or freedom of religion, or freedom of speech anymore in this country? Amazing. He had on F. Joe Biden or Biden and the woman, according to the report, telling him, you can't fly with, with that show. Isn't that amazing? Who want to fly now? They're not going to kick you off for fighting and carrying on. But if you wore F. Joe Biden sweater, hoodie, that's it. According to the blaze, as he were, as he departed, departed the plane, he says, this is what's wrong with our country. There's definitely one thing that's wrong with it. What happened to America? One last thing I want to show you, then I get to your call. Now, I don't know which one I'm more concerned about. Flying? or protest in my country saying death to America by the Allah U Abba people. The third world country came to me. I didn't go to it. I didn't move from America over to them. They came here. And you think flying is bad? And it is. Is that it's risky? And it is. Remember they used to tell us flying was safer than riding in a car. You're safer in the air, in the sky, than you are on the ground in a car. That's, that's changed now. I can't believe that these people are so desperate for money and so-called power that they would put our r lives at risk in the sky. Well, you think that's bad? I want to relax for a minute and watch this. If this doesn't cause you to shake in your boots, if this doesn't cause your, cause your afro to turn into an Amerifro, I don't know what will. This, and I want to remind you, this is happening in America, Michigan, America. Dear boy, Michigan, America. Not over the Allah U Abba country, right down the road. You're not, I want to say you're not going to believe this, but I, I guess at this point you will believe this. People, y'all need to be concerned. Not be afraid. Don't get fear. Fear is not of God. Fear is not good. Foster is reporting that protesters in Dearborn, Michigan, shouted, listen to this, shouted death to America and death to Israel during a rally held in the town in Michigan, United States. Watch this from X. We've been asked in the past, why are our protests on the International Day of Quds, why are they so anti-America? Why don't we just focus more on Israel and not talk so much about America? Gaza has shown the entire world why these protests are so anti-America. Because it's the United States government that provides the funds for all of the atrocities that we just heard about. This is why he would say to pour all of your, cha all of your chants and all of your shouts upon the head of America. Death to America. Malcolm X said, and I quote, oh, we, we live in one black. of the rottenest countries that, have ever, that has ever existed on this earth. It's not Genocide Joe that has to go. It's the entire system that has to go. Death to Israel. Wow. That's in America, folks. 
any bombs lately? This is not a joke. Those people came to our country. We didn't invite them here. They came on their own free will, however they got here. And they shouted death to America like they do over in Allahu Abba country. Remember the tower building down in New York that went down? That was death to America. And have you heard Joe Biden or anyone speak out against it? What will it take? This is evil versus good, folks. This is not good at all. Death to America. And they always, every, every evil group used blacks. He got to quote Malcolm X now. That is to pull in the black people to go along with it. Anyway, you've been warned. We're not even safe in our own country anymore. You talk about the economy, the economy is bad. How about safety? Who's on three shot? A first time call out of Virginia. Cade is on the air line. Hey, Kate, Kate, welcome to the show. You're on the air. So I, I'm calling because I've been struggling and finding purpose in life. I'm 19 years old. I go to a community college. Um, I was born and, and my parents uh, are divorced. And I've been just living uh, between the both of them, going to both houses. And um, I don't know, I feel like I'm at my lowest point in life. I have a porn addiction. I I have a nicotine addiction. I don't go to the gym. I don't go to church. I'm just a mess. Oh, a mess! And your question for me is what? How do I get myself out of this hole that I've dug myself okay. into? I understand. You sound, and you're only 19 years old? That's right. You sound so much older than 19. But I get that a lot, yeah. Yeah. Here's what you do. What do you mean by finding meaning in your life? What do you mean by you can't find meaning in your life? Well, I feel like every day it just seems like the same day over and over again. I have no, I don't have any hobbies. I don't have many friends that I hang out with. Every day just kind of seems like, okay, I wake up, I go to college, go to sleep. Do the same thing over again. Do you have a job? Um, not really. I, it's well. Sometimes I go, I do some like DoorDash. Oh, okay. But yeah, that's about it. Number one. Uh, oh, let me ask this: for, Are you living on your own? Or are you live with your parents? I live with my parents. Oh, amazing! Uh, here's what I recommend: Number one, there's no such thing as finding meaning to your life. Stop looking. You're never going to find it. It doesn't exist. And then, just, I, go ahead. I just, I don't know how do I, how do I dig myself out of what it, all these things. So describe to me the self that's in a hole. Who is that? Describe that person to me. I, I just believe that um, that I, I just I can't get myself out of all these things that I that I have done wrong. You know, I've got myself into a porn addiction that I've built. I've dealt with. There is no for, self. Who is the self that's in that? That's, who is the self? I guess my my mental soul. I guess I I, I don't believe it's my physical self. If, if, if you wanted to, you could come out of this illusion of a of you being in a hole just like that. You know all you have to do? Hmm. Come out of thoughts. Stop thinking about that. There is no past, no future. There is no meaning to life. There is no such thing as being addicted to anything. It's just you're thinking that you are, and that's what 
you're getting a false feeling from lies of the thoughts. All thoughts are all lies all the time. If you stop thinking that you are, it'll be over right now. There's nothing to fight against. You don't need to fight against porn. You don't need to fight against anything. You just need to stop thinking that you are. You've been set up by evil thoughts. No such thing as a true thought. They're all lies. You believe the thoughts. And and then forgive. I feel like I'm holding on to the past. I feel because I don't have the great. I don't have the greatest relationship with my father. Um, you know, I, I I saw all the the evil that he had done to my mother when I was young in my childhood. Right. Uh, and I, I just I haven't forgiven him for it. And I feel like maybe I need to do that in order to get ahead in life. Did what did he do to you? Well, I feel like because of what he did to my mother, that that somehow transcended onto me and how I how I could do in life. And do you uh, re- do you resent your mother for what she did to him? I don't know exactly what my mother did to my father. Why not? But I just I never know. I never asked to of what reason that had happened. Whatever he did to her, you think that he had nothing else better to do? You think she was an angel? I do believe he probably had a, you know, a, a good reason for what he had done, but I had also seen all the abuse and all that, and it, it really affected me. And uh, the only reason, Code, that it affected you because you identify with your mother and because you identify with your mother, you didn't see the hell that you bring up on your husband, on your father. He didn't know how to deal with the hell in her because he his mother had done to him what your mother did to him. He didn't know how to handle your mother. He became attracted to what he hates. So he married your mother, which is the same spirit as his mother. So here's what I recommend is that you got to forgive your mother for playing victim and turning you away from your father. Your your mother is not a good person, period. And right. and she still to this day says that he is a, a terrible person and all this. Um, and so I you you're probably you are right about that. Yeah. Your mother is an evil person for turning you away from your father. She has no love, she only has hate, and you must forgive her for that. And then forgive your father for not protecting you from your mother. Because he couldn't handle the hell that was in your mother. He never get over his mother, so he couldn't handle your mother. He loved you. It's just that he couldn't handle your mother. So you got to forgive him for that. And that feeling of trying to find life would disappear because what you're really longing for is the love of a father. But Satan is telling you that you're longing for the meaning of life. You need this. You need. Are you able to hold for a minute? Hold on. Let me take a break. Um, the treasure chest is now open on July. Back in a moment. We have a counseling service, and I have to admit. Thanks to God. It is the best counseling service on this side of heaven. I counsel with men and women, families, individuals around the world. Most people are unhappy. They're miserable. They have rough lives. They're depressed, suicidal, young and old of all races. I understand. I know why, and I do understand it. Because exactly what's happening in me is happening with everybody outside of me, inside of them. And I've noticed that with those who really, really, really want to understand, they overcome it just like that. Out of one counseling session. If you need counseling, you can go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. Best counseling service on this side of heaven.
Okay, welcome back. Real fast, the Hake Report is coming up at the top of this hour. The Hake Report from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific Time. And James Hake is on fire. He ain't got that red hair for nothing. He's on fire. And then at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, Joel Friday TV, he black. And you're going to know that he, had a, he has a part in his hair today. Trying to go back to the 60s. He got a part in his hair. Y'all pay attention to that. He black. And at uh, 12 noon, Pacific Time, the American anchor baby. The American anchor baby. Energy given to him by God. A genius at 12 noon. All right? So don't forget to support us on social media. X, J, uh, JLP Toss on X, Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram, and the Jesse, uh, let me see, uh, subscribe and follow the JLP Radio Network on YouTube and Instagram. All right? 888-7753-773. Let me go to K, not code. It's an O. I mean, an A, not an O. Uh, first time caller out of Virginia. Cade. Yes, I'm here. Here's what I recommend. Stop trying to fight against the porn. Stop trying to find uh, a meaning in life. There is no meaning, and, and, and you can't fight the porn stuff. You need to overcome the thoughts and emotion, and all that stuff will disappear. I promise you that. So no, here's, here's what I recommend. You go and forgive your mother for turning you against your father. When she was talking to you about your father like that, she was turning you away from him, and that's evil. And so what you're missing is the love of a father. You got to love your earthly father by forgiving him, and God will forgive you, and he will fulfill that emptiness, and you will be completed. Thank you, Jesse. Really, that's all. And don't be afraid to face your mother. And when you go to her, just say, hey, look, I'm sorry for resenting you for turning me away from my father. I realize now you couldn't help yourself. That was wrong. But I'm wrong for being angry about it. And, I, and don't expect her to apologize. If she get mad, you let her get mad. And if she hoop and holler and blame but don't respond to that at all. Just say, look, I'm sorry for resenting you. I realize you can't help it. And forgive your father. You can ask your father, why do you protect me from my mother? You can even deal with it. Why do you protect me? And you will see he can handle her. And you forgive your father, whether he admit it or not, God will forgive you. And I'm telling you, you will end up having the best life on earth. It will be amazing. All right. But you I'm, got, I'm going to do that. Yeah, you got to drop the anger. Right. And, I try to have no hate in my heart and every what, day. Right on. Well, now that you want no hate in your heart, it will be taken away, and he will give you a pure heart. And then all those vices and things that you have, or just your old nature, the nature you develop for having a dark heart, you start living in your imagination, and you're looking for things to make you feel better, and those things don't make you feel better. They give you a temporary feeling, but it doesn't change you, right? Don't judge yourself about that. Don't worry about that. It will be taken away from you. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Jesse. I hope you have Come back to your phone. Jesse? You repeat that. Speak up a little bit. I said thank and uh, thank you for your advice, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. You too, and do the silent prayer. Go to rebuildingtheman dot com and start doing the silent prayer, so you can God can bring you out of your thoughts. Rebuildingtheman dot com slash prayer. Right, thank you. All right, and one last thing: Why are you in college? Well, it, it was forced upon me. Yeah, uh, to my father, and he he. He was really adamant on it, and he, um, yeah, there was really no other option. It was either that or um, straight to a job, and and I, I really I took the latter, and I said, well, if I if my 
because my father was saying, okay, you you have to go to college. And on the other hand, my mom was saying, okay, you can either go to college or you can go to work. But I, I didn't really have, I, mean, I was in the same situation I'm in now. So I said, well, if I go straight into working, I'm going to have to start at the very lowest, and I don't know if that's the best option. There's nothing wrong with that. Everybody start out at the on the totem pole, and you grow into it, and and that's what helped you become a develop into your greatest strength of taking care of yourself. You you start at the bottom, and you 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 commit to that. You show up on time. You're doing the best. You save ten percent of your money and pay your bills with the rest. You look around, and you have an amazing life, man. I now I don't. I'm not telling you to drop out of college, but I am telling you to get yourself a nice job. And and while you're in college, so you can earn your way out, uh, uh, be out on your own, and everything. All right. I, I uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, that sounds good. So let me know how it goes. Go ahead and forgive. Do the silent prayer, and let me know how it goes. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Jesse. All right, buddy. Amazing. Eight 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 seven seven five three seven seven three. Let me go to. Elliot, a first-time call out of Tennessee. There is, there are two lines open if you want to jump in, 888-77-JESSE. Elliot, out of Tennessee, welcome to the show. Hey, Jesse, can you hear me? I hear you. Hey, man, you're doing great today, man. I've been listening to you, man. It's, uh, hey, Kyle, actually, to talk about something different, but now I kind of want to talk about, um, you know, just give you a different perspective on on the black man. Okay. Um. One thing that I've noticed that, you know, in your conversation, of course, you said a couple of times that we all have the same issues, right? Yes. Like, I think I think that was a young white man you just got off the phone with, it sounds like it. Um, I thought, was he, he white or like, black? I thought he was black. It sounded sound like he was white to me. Yeah, it may have been, but I, I don't know. Go ahead. Yeah, but I, I've, been, I've been listening to you, and it seems like you get a lot of, uh, you know, callers from different, but most of the time you get... Seem like you get older black people trying to argue with you and trying to get you to change the way you talk about us, and you get a lot of white people that you know want to get advice from you. But um, that might just be how I, how I hear it. But um, I just want to let you know, like I start, I'm starting to feel like you know your message is good. You have a great message. I've never really heard it, you know, um, how you put it. And a lot of people may have that, you know, that issue going on, and it seems like you are healed that those people that do, you know. And um, that's a good perspective on how you look at you know, the total perspective of the Bible and everything, and you're trying to get everybody to look within. That's awesome. But it's like the thing about the black man, of course, a lot of young black men are out here trying to find their way just like that young black man. Everybody kind of needs advice when you're 17, yeah. 18, 19 years old. But when you get, when you when you out here, the, the biggest thing about us in the black community is like, yeah, of course, we have this Democrat issue, and of course, we fall for a lot of lies and everything that people kind of present us. And you said a couple of times that, of course, we don't have, we don't need to follow leaders. We don't need to be worried about you know what somebody else is telling us and find our own way and different things like that. That's actually what what black men are doing. And a lot of black men are falling to you know uh, illegal things that's landing them in jail. But most of the black men are in jail for drugs or or crime that was centered around drugs. And drugs are always linked to making money. So. It's one thing to say and act like, you know, we're just uh, the problem with America. But at the same time, there's a lot of black men that are, that are living that regular go-to-work life and finding their way. A lot of them don't go to church anymore because, of course, just like you were talking, about, talking back in the 90s, we saw the bullshit within these pastors and what they were trying to preach, and we saw it in between those lines. So, no, we're not going to go to the church and listen to this guy when I can find my own way and have a relationship with God within. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But the outlook of the black community and the narrative is still being painted like we're not doing this and we're not doing that. It's a lot of black men that actually are doing that, and it's a lot of black men that represent in that arena. It's either... The ones that get a lot of money, you got these ones that go into politics. Of course, they're they're they look at as scumbags because they're trying to change certain things and they're trying to you know be leaders and talk all this rhetoric that we don't need to hear. They need to just motivate us. But at the same time, they don't do that. They get this money, they start running out the money. Everybody start running to the same pitfall with the politicians. You got the pastors doing the same thing. So it's like, what do you really expect, and what is your advice? 
Because somebody like me, I'm in the middle of the road. I go to work. I have a business. I have kids. I take care of them. But when I listen in to you, I get motivated to want to help my community in a different way. You see what I'm saying? I and do. It's like, yeah. Of course, you, just like you said earlier, I've been listening to you today. Leave people in their own hell. Yeah. That's what the black community is doing. We worried about <laughs> ourselves. So it's like, hell, don't, I ain't worried about what happened over there. I go sell my drugs if I can get away with it, or I go work <laughs> my job if it, if it pay me enough money. We, the, the real problem in America is classism. And I know you say ain't no isism and all that. Yes, it is. It's classism. The rich always got away. The rich, you right. They neighborhoods gonna stay nice. You give black people some money, and they have, you you put them in a position to win. They gonna stay winning. But if you if you don't never have nothing to begin with, of course you ain't gonna do nothing but destroy. It. So we gotta just look at the odds that that we against. We don't represent nothing but thirteen percent of this country, but yet and still we want to act like we just tearing it down. It's, it's way more white people out here that's doing devastating things to this country. That's in politics that's in, you know, positions of power that's tearing this country down and putting system in place to keep poverty levels at the way it is. That's the problem with this country. So your question for me is what? My question is you is, if you're giving this message out to everybody that everybody needs to change and women need to get back in their place, because you know the women is the head of the black community. So Uh, it's like, what are we supposed to do as black men? We can't argue with our mamas. We can't argue with our mates because that's going to give us either domestic violence or that's going to get us, okay, you know, okay, mama, well, I ain't going to talk to you no more. That's, and what does that leave us in our community? It's still shattered. Well, so here's, it's what, like it's no, here's what each black man and woman need to do as an individual, not as a group. They need to look at themselves because all of their problems is inside of them. It's nothing else but inside of them. It's not classism. It's no ism. It's that they have unforgiving hearts. Like every human being on earth, the blacks need to go and forgive their mothers for turning them away from their fathers and recreating them in her image. And that ain't gonna get these people. That ain't gonna get these people out their situation. Yes, it will. I promise you, it will. I promise you, it will. From the dollar store because they ain't got no money. No, jobs paying two hundred dollars an hour, Elliot. and they rent two thousand dollars a month. Elliot, Elliot, they're not. They're not stealing from the dollar store because they're poor. They're stealing from the dollar store because they have no love. They have anger, and that anger is causing them to do it. But once they overcome that anger. They're going to be fine. Everything around them will become clear, and they will be able to start taking care of themselves as individuals. They will stop identifying with being black. They will stop identifying with the so-called black leaders. But they got to go and forgive their mothers and forgive their fathers for not protecting them from the mothers. And God will forgive them and open their eyes up, and life will begin. It's a spiritual battle. It's not physical at all. It has nothing to do with white people, slavery, or how much money you have or don't have. It has zero to do with that. And I'm hearing from black men and women from around the world, but especially in America, they didn't know that they were supposed to forgive mama. They didn't know. They thought they loved their mother, but they hate their mother. They didn't know it until they heard it. And some of them have gone and forgiven and their whole life just opened up. They thought it was something else, and it's not. You know, most black people won't won't vote for Trump because they like the stimulus checks. They like what now? You know, most white. You know, most black people are going to vote for Trump because they like the stimulus checks. Right, they do. You but know, still, you know, money. You know, Trump that's a false no- hope. You know, do you know what that means? What most black people don't have money. That's they, what that means. They do have money, or they can have no, money if they were no. not if they were not getting it free anywhere else. They would go out and earn their way. Bro, I think you need to go into the hood and talk to the people a little bit more. I do talk to them all the time, but I understand no. what you're saying. <laughs> Let me do this because of time. I want you to call me again because I understand what you're saying. But the solution to all a human being. Issues in life is that they must drop the anger. 
Yeah, they got to drop the anchor. They got to find guy, and they got to get them some money, bro. No, you but can't leave that out. But if they you have gotta, money, look money. at the blacks that have money. They're miserable. No, they not. They yes, have, they are. They still messing up too because they evil. Uh, right. Most of them That's right. They still be evil. That's you right. You know what I'm saying? That's the problem. But Ellen, I got to run, but I really like yeah, talking bro. to you about this issue. But call me again on it, okay? Go ahead, man. Keep it up. All right, buddy. Super chat. Super chat. Super chat. Super chat. DLive.tv slash Jesse Lee Peterson. WD41 gave three diamonds. No message. Thank you. Thank you. Dawn gave a rumble rant. Silent prayers are better than weed. That's right, for sure. <laughs> That's right. Evgeny Crosby with a diamond. Rosa needs to watch the movie Nefarious. Rosa from the Netherlands. Your first hour call. Oh, yeah. It was amazing. I love Rosa call this morning. It was so deep. Rosa, Rosa, just get back on track. Do the silent prayer. Watch. Don't be afraid. Don't judge yourself. And you'll be fine. Yes. Thank you. Sion Lee <laughs> bought three coffees. Jesse loves 74 going on 75. Everywhere you look is nothing but Latin Mexican. This is not very pithy, Sion. Everywhere the blacks are being overtaken. So are the whites, but they mix with them. Since when not natural food in America became this expensive? This is outrageous. This is not normal. Something has to happen. The Great White Hope will be the solution, but it's not gonna. It's gonna take him forever to clean house now, if they even let him in. Amazing. Thank you, <laughs> Piffy. <laughs> Thank you, Sion. I appreciate it. Sion Lee with another coffee. All these years, some may think I'm obsessed with you, Jesse, but I don't give a bleep. <laughs> I'm not obsessed. I just have a lot of liking and respect for you. I'm in love again. This time I mean it. I'm in love again. So in love again. Thank you, CR. I appreciate it. Marcus bought a coffee. After spending time back home in Virginia, I've observed that blacks today carry around a lot of anger. They are mean, prideful, and very bitter, and don't like each other or other groups. The women are also mostly intolerable. The blindness is sad. Yeah. The black women have destroyed black men, black male and females. It ain't, it's not racism. They hate their mothers, and they don't realize it. Um, according to PolitiFact, Larry Elder said on CNN in 2014, if black Americans were a country, I'll be the 15th wealthiest nation. No, it'll be the 15th wealthiest nation in the world. So they do have money. They just don't know how to use it right because they have the anger. Thank you. Amazing. Shout out to the top contributors on DLive, WD41, Evgeny Crosby, Henry Ford Lives, Stan69, Aries1, Zealous Hermit, and the rest of the guys over on there and gals. Guys includes guys and gals. Right. Thank and thanks, you. guys. I do believe that's all for now. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hassan, pull up uh, X, whatever, over in Dearborn, they saying death to America and death to Israel. Uh, and I want to play this one more time. If this doesn't concern you, I don't know what else will. The economy is bad. Borders wide open. But if this, this doesn't concern you, I don't know what else will. This is in America. This is not overseas. This is in Dearborn, according to Fox, Michigan, the United States. This is scarier than getting on an airplane today. Watch the uh, court to Fox. Protesters in Dearborn, Michigan shouted, death to America, death to America, and death to Israel during a rally held in the town. Watch it from X. We've been asked in the past, why are our protests on the International Day of Quds why are they so anti-America? Why don't we just focus more on Israel and not talk so much about America? Gaza has shown the entire world why these protests are so anti-America. 
because it's the United States government that provides the funds for all of the atrocities that we just heard about. This is why he would say to pour all of your, cha all of your chants and all of your shouts upon the head of America. Death to America, they were saying. Malcolm X said, and I quote, we live in one of the rottenest countries that, have ever, that has ever existed on this earth. It's not genocide Joe that has to go. It's the entire system that has to go. Move to Israel! Death to Israel. So these people come to our country and they want to destroy the entire system. Why did they come here? If they liked the way their system were, was where they came from, why didn't they stay there and go back? Death to America. People, you need to be calling your, pol your uh, politicians right away. They need to do something about that before this get out of control. And these people don't play. They feel like it's okay to die for their cause. They're not like soft American. We ain't gonna die for no cause. <laughs> Most people want you to die for Jesus. We definitely ain't gonna die for no cause, but these people will. And they'll take whoever's around with them. This is not a joke. This is worth looking into. Call your politicians, tell them they need to stop this one. Send them back to their country or do something. Because they want to destroy the entire system of America. We didn't make these people come here. We didn't invite them here. Not that I'm aware of. I didn't. And death to America. And death to Israel. Okay. Let me go to Stephen out of uh, Maryland. Stephen, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Good morning, Mr. Jesse. How are you? All is well, Stephen. That's good. Look, uh, I want to ask the question. To get into heaven, will they take your thoughts or your actions? I'm sorry? To enter into heaven, will you go on your thoughts or your actions? N neither one. Neither one? Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Next thing I want to know about, you know, you know a fool called Leghorn, right? What? You praise him. You know Fog Horn Leghorn? Hold on a minute. Uh, I don't know who you're asking about. I'm going to let uh, Sean check it out. Let me know first. Hold on. Let me go to Rick out of Virginia. Rick, welcome to the show. You're on the air. What's up, Jesse? What's going on with you, brother? All is well, Rick. Thanks for calling. Man, you know what, man? What Larry Elder said that money to build the 16th largest country in the world. Uh, he said, according to Polifax, huh, PolitiFact, Larry Elder said in CNN in 2014, if black Americans were a country, it would be the 15th wealthiest nation in the world. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. See, black people got um, it's just like what you just said, too. They have anger, and right now, most blacks, not all blacks, are experimenting the curses of Deuteronomy 28. And um, they just, um, it's it just um, that when, uh, when blacks have wealth, you know what they buy? What they wealth there on, Jesse? What's that? Weed, clothes, jewelry, and women. And, and all that depreciates don't feel well. <laughs> We don't let them know that you know, up in San Francisco, they're having a whole week of weed. Man, you know what? And they are, using, they are using black politicians here in Virginia to pass laws like, you know, like if, um, if a state... Um, Rick, I, Rick I hate to cut you they, off. Can you call me? I'm, oh, we're going to get cut off. Rick, call me in tomorrow. Don't wait so late. Okay, well, I just got through because your show is so popular now, dude. Amazing. Well... Thank you, buddy. Call me again, though, okay? All right. Love you, brother. Be good. Thank you, Rick. I am so out of time. I'll be back tomorrow. And, Stephen, call me back tomorrow. They told me what that means. I didn't know. Uh, we got enough with death to America happening right now. But, listen, I am out of time. Get on that straight and narrow path. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there.
And when you've done all you can do to stay there, stay there some more. Forgive. You must forgive if you want perfect peace on earth or stay in your hell. Salvation, Steve, is of the heart. There's nothing else you can do to enter into the kingdom. Do the silent prayer. Forgive your mama and your daddy, and you'll be fine. The Hake Report is coming up now. TheHakeReport.com. And then at 11 after the Hake, join Friday TV. And then the Anchor Baby after join Friday TV at 12 noon Pacific time. Bye, folks. Tomorrow is Baba Thumper Thursday. Oh, no, it's not. It's Wednesday, huh? Manhood Hour. What the? Manhood Hour. Tomorrow. Take care, folks. Bye. Amazing. <laughs>Here's what I recommend. I invite you to download my silent prayer. And I want you to start doing it. You just download it, get the points of how to do it. And then after a while, you just do it on your own. It's going to point you in the right direction that your life will be returned to you from God. He will give you your life back. Because anyone and all people who has anger, they're not themselves. You are the person that you are angry at. That's why it's so important to get to know yourself. So that you can see who you're angry at. And if you're doing the hooping and hollering prayers and things like that, some people get up, oh, praise the Lord, hoop and holler, bless my mama, bless my daddy. Continue to do it. Do both. You will see if you want to stay with the hooping and hollering or do you want to be still and know God. So my gift to you, no charge, at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. I noticed after a while that when these guys overcome their anger, they have amazing ideas about starting a business. But because they've been told that if you don't get a loan from the bank or if you don't have a five-year plan or if you don't do this, and it's just simply not true, it's the first step with faith, then all things are possible. So, But the most important thing is to return to the Father. That yearning that you have, that emptiness, that void, is not for more stuff. It's not for more friends. It is a return to the Father because there's no way you can return to God and be angry at your earthly father. So thank you all so, so much, right? People around the world donated to Bond at rebuildingtheman.com or they call 800-411-2663 and we're still committed to pointing the right way for men and women to return to the Father.